All right. Hello, everyone. Um, so uh, my apologies for the late start. Uh, we unfortunately had a massive uh, distributed denial of service attack against uh, our servers and uh, <laughs> saturated all of our, all of our uh, data lines, like basically hundreds of gigabits of, of data were saturated. Um, we've, uh, we think we've overcome most of that, and uh, so it's uh, now time to proceed. But um, as, as this, uh, this massive attack illustrates, uh, there's a lot of opposition to people just hearing um, what uh, President Trump has to say. And um, so, but I, I'm honored to have this conversation. I want to emphasize it's a, it's a conversation. Um, and it's really intended to just get, get a feel for what Donald Trump is just like in a conversation. Um, so it's hard to catch a vibe about someone if you just don't hear them talk in a normal way. And when, you know, when there's, when there's an adversarial interview, it's like n no one's themselves in an adversarial interview. Um, so for, and, and this is really aimed at, uh, kind of open-minded, independent voters who, um, you know, just trying to make up their mind. Uh, and, uh, so you can understand, like, what, what is, uh, you know, what is it just like to have a conversation? So, um, uh, honored to, 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 Donald, great, great to, uh, to speak. Um, we, we had a, a great conversation yesterday, as, as you mentioned yesterday. If, if we could just record that conversation and post it, it would have been excellent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, I hope we can have something like that today. Well, I think we will. I'm pretty sure we will. And congratulations, because I see you broke every record in the book with uh, so many millions of people, and it's an honor. We view that as an honor. And then uh, you do want silencing of certain voices. Usually those are voices that have something to say that are constructive, oftentimes <laughs> constructive. And yeah. uh, so we have to consider it an honor. But congratulations on breaking every record in the book tonight. That's great. Well, thank you. Um, well, I mean, maybe uh, we could start off with... Um, I mean, the assassination attempt, uh, which uh, w w was an incredible thing. And I have to say that, uh, you know, your actions after that, mass, that, that assassination attempt were inspiring. Um, you know, you, instead of shying away from things, instead of ducking down, um, you were pumping your fist in the air and saying, fight, fight, fight. And I think that's, I mean, you know, the, the, the president of the United States represents America. And I think that is... That is America. That is, that is strength under fire. And, um, so that's, uh, you know, a, a big, a, you know, a part of the reason why I was, uh, excited to endorse you as, uh, the, the, the President of the United States for ha having a term here is, uh, that was, that was just incredibly inspiring. But, but, I mean, what was it like for you? Not pleasant. Not to be pleasant. I said I was blood. I had more blood. I didn't know I had. I didn't know I had that much blood. The doctors <laughs> later told me that the ear is a place that is uh, a very bloody place if you're going to get hit. But uh, in this case, it was probably the best alternative you could even think about because it went at the right angle, and uh, you know it was uh, it was a hard hit. It was very. Uh, I guess you would say surreal, but it wasn't surreal. You know, I was telling somebody you have instances like this or like a lot less than this where you feel it's a surreal situation. And I never felt that way. I, I knew immediately that it was a bullet. I knew immediately that it was at the ear. Yeah. And because uh, it, you know, it hit very hard, but hit the ear. And I also heard people shout bullets, bullets, uh, you know, get down, get down, because I, you know, I moved down pretty nicely, pretty quickly, and we had bullets flying right over my head after I went down, so I'm glad I went down. The the bigger miracle was that I was looking in the exact direction of the shooter, and so it hit, it hit me at an angle that was uh, far less destructive than any other angle, so that was the miracle. That was, yeah. for those people that don't believe in God, I think yeah, we got to all start thinking about that. You have to... Uh, you know, I'm I'm a believer. Now I'm more of a believer, I think. And a lot of people have said that to me. A lot of great people have said that to me, actually. But it was uh, it was amazing that I happened to be turned just at that perfect yeah. angle. And uh, all because I put down a, a chart on immigration that showed that the numbers were so great. I, I love that chart even more now. I mean, maybe it's a sign. 
<laughs> Maybe yeah. that's a sign, man. <laughs> it's an immigration sign. You, you yeah. highlighted a, a serious issue. And, yeah. and at that moment, yes, the, the, right. the boat, Mr. You know, hit your ear, but, 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 you know, Mr. 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 your head. I mean, you're, well, the, the amazing thing is that, uh, the sign, I said, bring down that sign on immigration. And it was literally about an eighth of a second where it would be good. And, and after that, it was going to yeah. be a disaster, no matter which, which way you were facing. But it just had that, that perfect angle, which was exactly yeah. at this shooter. Very sad situation. Such a sad situation. As you know, we lost somebody that was great, Corey, yeah. who, a firefighter, a, a, a great gentleman, a great, a great trupper. He was a, a, just a fantastic family and a fantastic man. And a friend of mine came up, Elon, and said, I'd like to give uh, the family some kind of uh, help. And I said, oh, that's great. He said, do you mind? I said, I don't mind at all. And he wrote out a check for a million dollars, gave, gave it to the wife. And, you know, uh, she said, this is really nice, but I'd rather have my husband back, which is a nice thing for sure. somebody to say, to be honest. She's, she's great. The family is great. And we raised a lot of yeah. money for them and for uh, two other gentlemen who are unbelievable people also. They were hit really badly. They thought they were not going to make it, and they did. The doctors in the Butler area, I tell you, they were incredible. They saved the two, and uh, they were really hit tough, both of them, equally. Yeah. Uh, and we thought yeah. – we. my first question was because I heard bullets flying over me. I said, how many people were killed? Because we had a massive crowd there, a tremendous – yeah. Thousands and thousands of people. And, and there was no land. I mean, it was just, it was all people. So I said, how many people have been killed? Because I knew there were other shots being fired. And, sure. And they said, uh, we don't know yet, but some people have been badly hurt. And uh, I have to give the uh, Secret Service a sniper, they call him, or sharpshooter, but sniper. Yeah. Because he didn't know there was a problem. Uh, he's been, he's an extraordinary shot obviously, and he didn't know there was a problem. And he yeah. was able to pick it all out within five seconds. And he used one bullet from very far away, I guess probably about 400 yards. The shooter was 130, but he was on the uh, yeah. uh, he was on the opposite side of the field and the podium. And he saw the, the smoke and the flame from the gun, immediately recognized it, and immediately took a shot. And it was one... Perfect shot from very far away. And, and if he, if he didn't yeah. do that, Elon, he would have, I mean, if he would have, a lot of people, a lot more people have been, could have been sure. badly hurt and killed. So yeah, I, I have to take my hat off to him because that's also a surreal, you know, he's been with them for 23 years and there's, yeah. he's never had anything like this. And all of a sudden he has to act and it's a very tough thing to sure. act and to be shooting somebody, but he saw the, uh, he saw the gun, saw the smoke, saw the flame from the gun, very far away. I obviously has very good eyes. He's got very good vision, which I assume you yeah. have to have in that particular work. But he uh, he <laughs> took aim very quickly, and it was they say it was approximately five seconds from long range, yeah. one bullet. If that didn't happen, because yeah. the shooter had a lot of bullets, he had a lot of a lot of cartridges sure. up there with him, so. Well, I mean, I mean that, that that that's clearly, uh, uh, you know, um, you know, he was he was very competent in taking that shot uh, to stop the the assassin the attempted assassination. Um, uh, but but I mean, that does seem to be, I, I mean, some pretty significant failings um, elsewhere in the system. Like, there's just no way that, like, how on earth does a shooter get on a roof 130 yards away? Um, that seems crazy. Um, I think most people like or what people are wondering how that how on earth could such a thing happen. Well, you know, I view it as two ways. Uh, there should have been nobody in the roof. Uh, there were people yeah. because there were so many tens of thousands of people there. There were people that were seeing him, and there was one woman with a red shirt and uh, right. Trump all over it, and, and she's screaming, well, "That guy's got a gun!" You know, you saw it probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a guy yeah, there with a gun. I mean, it's like. I'm just, I'm just, I guess, I mean, from, from my part, and I think probably many members of the public are wondering how the heck are, you know, basically p people wandering by pointing out there's a guy on the roof with a gun. Yeah. Um, I, I've never seen it, but uh, somehow it's, it's not being addressed. Um, 
That, that does seem yeah, crazy. Well, they, they're going to learn from this. The uh, communication between the local police, who sort of had an idea, and then ultimately a man lifted himself up to the roof, could barely do it because, you know, he was pulling himself up. And yeah. he saw the man with the gun. The man with the gun pointed the gun at him. He thought he was probably going to get shot. But, you know, he was like pulling himself up. And because of that, he couldn't get to his gun. And he fell down, actually very badly hurt his uh, leg, his ankle. I hear very badly. But, okay. but he fell down. And he did, you know, from what I understand, he did say there's a guy up there with a gun. And the the shooting started very quickly after that. I think it I think it forced the shooter to go maybe quicker. You know, you're supposed to be a very good shot. Yeah. My sons, uh, Don and Eric, they they can't believe what happened. But they said from 130 yards, a bad shot would hit that target almost every time. They said it's like in golf, yeah. thinking a two foot putt. Yeah, it's, it's not a hot, it's not a no, tough shot. It's not a it's um, not a long shot. The uh, Secret Service person had the long shot. He had a, you know, triple the yeah. distance, actually. So, uh, you know, it's, it was a, a terrible thing. It, look, uh, it, it's hard. I have to say this about the Secret Service. When I went down, and, you know, I went down based on, I think they're screaming, uh, but other people also, because people saw this happen. You know, you had so many people. One of the miracles was that nobody ran. I mean... If a gun goes off, the crowd yeah. control people showed, showed us this. When guns go off, and it does happen in stadiums at a soccer match or some kind of a match, everybody flees. They call it a stampede, like cattle. But everybody, and a lot yeah. of people get killed with those stampedes. Uh, we had sure. more people than you'd have at, you know, some of these matches or, or these games. And uh, nobody left. You know, you had a, a small group behind us in the grandstand, and that was full. And you look at it as it was taking place, and normally they'd be running. They didn't leave. They saw that I was hurt. They saw a lot of blood, and they saw that I went down. And it's almost like they wanted to be with me. Well, out front, you had thousands, tens of thousands of people. You, as far as the eye could see, you had people in Butler, as far as the eye could see. And and uh, yeah. and a lot of press, too. There was, you know, many cameras on watching this. It's what made, makes it so different because normally things happen that aren't good, but you never have a picture of it. Here we have all these cameras shooting it. So, yeah. uh, you know, it's sort of amazing. But one of the interesting things was that you didn't have anybody flee. You didn't have anybody stampede. Sure. Nobody. And there were some people behind me. They stood up and they're looking like, you know, I mean, I say you want to have yeah, you yeah. want to have them in a foxhole with you. I want to meet some of those people sure, because sure. it's so different from what you heard. But so... So I was down, but the Secret Service guys, yeah. there were bullets flying right over my head. You could hear them go whizzing. And, yeah. and these guys came jumping on top of me. And a young lady, Kate, uh, would jump. They, they moved so fast. And let me tell you, that took tremendous courage. Now, there was a lack of coordination. Uh, there was, you know, obviously everybody understands that somebody, that, that building should have been covered. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that I, I think that's thing. like, I mean, I, I mean, looking at the, the aerial views, I, that building would be like the number one spot for a sniper. I mean, it's like, it's like the, if you were to pick, like, what is the favorite, place, what, if you, so if the goal is to assassinate, what's your favorite spot? That building. Uh, the You're right. That building would be number one. That would have been the spot. Um, it's like you couldn't, you can ask for a better no, location. It's like, no, that right. would have been the spot. Um, you know what people think yeah. is when the uh, local policeman, who, by the way, uh, was, you know, he really, uh, he did what he was supposed to do. He couldn't hold on any longer. And then when he yeah. got his head just peeking above, this guy standing there with a gun at his head. And when he fell down, again, hurt his ankle very badly, but he was making the calls. But what happened is the firing took place very soon. So what yeah. they think is that this guy ran to his site, which he had all planned out with the gun. Uh, he ran to the site and he started shooting fast. And maybe that's why... He, uh, well, he sort of missed. I mean, you know, he, uh, yeah, he, but he got just me, you, but you it could have been, it I mean, could have been, uh, could have been a yeah. much bigger problem. He, but he totally would have hit if, if, if you hadn't turned your head. So, like, you know, there was a, 
it, it was a, a very near thing. It was so, a miracle. If I hadn't um, turned my head, yeah. I would not be talking to you right now. As much as I like you, exactly, I would not, yeah. I would <laughs> well, not be talking yeah. to you. Maybe talking to me from another realm, perhaps. Yeah, that's um, right. We'd be talking from a different so. place. But uh, it was, a, it was a, you know, it was a very terrible experience. The, the Butler Hospital, they did such a great job. Uh, the doctors were so good. Everybody was so good. There was, there was a mistake if, if somebody knew, cause people were hearing that, you know, there was just a bad feeling that there was somebody was around. You know that story now, it's been. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. if somebody could have said, cause they've oftentimes said, you know, like there'd be a lightning storm or something. Cause I've done, I think over 300. I think I did a lot more than that, but we did a lot. And oftentimes they'll say, sir, could you wait 10 minutes, please? Sir, could you wait 20 minutes? There's a storm overhead or lightning or something, right? And yeah. that happens often. Yeah. And this would have been a perfect time for that to have happened, but it, it didn't, yeah. it didn't get coordinated. That was the problem. Well, uh, it was, uh, your, I think, uh, your, your, um, actions in the, in the heat of a uh, fire and, you know, like what, what I find admirable there was that you, you can't fake bravery under such circumstances. The courage is instinctual or it is not. It's not a rehearsed action. And so I just want to say that uh, I think a lot of people admire your, your, your courage under fire there. And, uh, um, yeah, so. Thank you very yeah. much. I, I appreciate it. I didn't, I don't think, I didn't think of it. I just wanted to get up and I wanted to stand up. I wanted to let people know, you know, I felt I was good when, when they were uh, on top of me, covering me, actually, very much covering me and, and very bravely. But uh, I wanted to get up. I said, I want to get up. And uh, they wanted, you know, they had. They have everything there. They have, uh, they wanted stretcher. I didn't like the stretcher. And I knew I was hit in the ear, but I knew I wasn't hit anywhere else. They felt I was hit someplace else because yeah. it was such a, a lot of blood. And they were sure that I was hit someplace else. And they were saying, sir, what, you, you, you were hit more than the ear. I said, nope, I was hit in the ear. I want to get up. Let me get up. And so we, I got up and the crowd didn't know what to think. I mean, this was so, so many people, and they you could see they were confused. They didn't know what to think. And I wanted to let them know I was okay. It was very important for me to let them yeah. know that. And they went wild. You, you've seen the after. They didn't go wild when yeah. I got up because they didn't know, was I alive? You really couldn't tell. When I stood up before the hand, before the, you know, the fist in the air, uh, they didn't know if I was alive. Nobody did. And... uh when I put the fist up, they were, they were just relieved and happy and thrilled and the place went crazy. It was pretty amazing. Yeah. It was a, it was a terrible well, was, thing, but it was, it was incredibly, pretty, pretty nice. incredibly moving. Yeah. Um, well, and, and I mean, speaking of the, 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 the sort of slide that got you to turn that, uh, saved your life really, uh, was the legal immigration uh, slide. Right. Maybe this, right. maybe this, it's worth talking about, about that. Since, it was, it was. <laughs> that slide, that slide saved right. my life. You're right. the illegal immigration saved my life. You're right. But it, <laughs> it, it had to be at that exact <laughs> angle. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's a great one. <laughs> saved, saved by illegal immigration. You know, the, the incredible okay. thing though, when you talk about the odds, you had to be exactly at that angle. But, but the incredible yeah. thing is that the chart, I used it less than 20% of the time. It was just a moment. Yeah. It's always on my left, never my right. And it's always at the end of the speech. So yeah. here we have it. It's on the right, not the left. It's at the beginning, not the end. And even the people that put it up, they were unprepared. And, and they did a great job. They got it up immediately, fortunately. But I looked to the right and, and, the, bullet, and the bullet came whizzing by, hitting my ear. Uh, so it was amazing. But when you think of the odds of that, and, yeah, yeah. you know, that that normally you wouldn't use it. Normally I wouldn't have the thing. And then, you know, yeah. it would have been a very different story. It's, it's very much, I I say, an act of God. It's a miracle that it happened. And I'm honored sure. by it. I'm honored by it. Well, well uh, what, 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 were you, what were you about to say about illegal immigration before you were rudely interrupted? Well, I was going to say how good the numbers were. By the way, we're going back to Butler. And we're going to Great. go back in October. We're all set up and we're, the people are fantastic in Butler. It's a big, it's a great area. Great. These are incredible people. 
uh, like the three that in the case of Corey killed and the other two, the, the families are, I got to know them a little bit and the families are great, but we're going back to Butler. And, uh, I think I'll probably start by saying, uh, as I was saying, yeah, you know, prior to being so horribly so, interrupted, yeah. but yeah, so uh, rudely interrupted by an yeah, so, uh, attempt. But um, no, but the chart. <laughs> some people have, have no manners. Elon, the chart was just a chart that in my last week we had the best uh, illegal uh, immigration numbers, meaning stopping. Uh, it was at the lowest. You've seen the chart. It's become a, quite a famous yeah, chart. Yeah. But that was the lowest yeah. point ever recorded. It was a really, um, I mean, I was very proud of those numbers. And then you see what happened with these people. Uh, Kamala and Joe, you see what happened. They just let it go. I had remain in Mexico policies. I had all these different policies that were so good. Uh, guys like Tom Holman and uh, Brandon Judd from Border Patrol. I, all These are all people that they've been on television. They said it's the best numbers we've ever had. We had so many different checks. Catch and release in Mexico, not the United States. We had catch and release in the United States. We had it in Mexico. We had so many things. We had things where if people, many people come in there, they have contagious diseases. We had everything passed. If you have a contagious disease, I'm sorry, but we can, we cannot allow you into the country. <laughs> so we were setting literally yeah. records and, uh, I, all I was doing is showing that and I, I use it sometimes. Sure. And in this case, I'm glad I used it. I can tell you that, but, but, they were fantastic numbers, but I'm going to sleep with that chart always. I'm going to, I'll be sleeping with that chart. That chart was, uh, was very important, very important for a lot of reasons. Well, I mean, I mean, would it be accurate to, would it be accurate to say that you're supportive of legal immigration? Um, but that, we, but we also need to shut down illegal immigration, uh, and especially unvetted illegal yes. immigration because you, you know, and, and, and this, that's not the same as saying that everyone who's an illegal immigrant is bad. In fact, um, I, I think most people who are illegal immigrants are actually good, but but you can't tell the difference unless there's a solid vetting of who comes across the border. Does, is, is, does that does that accurate, actually represent your position? I, I say okay. it very simply: they have to come in legally. They have to be checked. Yeah. Because look, Kamala was the border czar. Now she's denying it. Everything that I do, <laughs> she's, she's saying yeah. she was strong on the border. Uh, we're going to be strong. Well. She doesn't have to say it. She could close it up right now. They could, they could do things right now. It's horrible. Uh, no tax on tips. And all of a sudden she's making a speech. She's saying there will be no tax on tips. I said that months ago. And by the way, they had just the opposite. You know, they had not only tax on tips, but they hired 88,000 IRS agents. And many of them were assigned to go get waitresses and caddies and all of this on tips. They have a policy. They had a policy that they were really going to go after you and were really harassing people horribly. And then all of a sudden, for politics, she says, you know, she comes out with, with what I said, which I think is terrible. And I think it's also hitting them very hard. These people are fake. Now they're also saying they did a good job in the border. We had the worst numbers in the history of the world, not of our country. There's never been a country in history that has had a catastrophe like this. We've had... I believe, and I think you believe this too, you know, you hear 12 yeah. million, 13, I believe it's over 20 million people came into our country, many yeah. coming from jails, from prisons, from, from uh, mental institutions, or a bigger version of that is yeah. insane asylums, and many are terrorists. And I'll tell you what, they're, they're coming not just from South America, they're coming from Africa, they're coming from all over the world, they're coming from Asia, yeah. they're coming from the Middle East, they're coming from countries that are uh, stupidly and horribly bombing Israel October 7th. They're coming from all over the world. They, and, and, you know, you look at, it's so sad October 7th because it should have never happened. Yeah. It's so sad sure. when you look at Ukraine. It should have never happened. We have a defective yeah. government. These are defective people. And they're not people that should be running it. But where you see it the best is the border because you had, you have millions of people coming in a month and then she gets up and she tries to pretend like she's going to do something. She had three and a half years. And by the way, they have another five months that they can do something, but they yeah. won't do anything. It's all talk. She's no. incompetent and he's incompetent. And frankly, I think that she's more incompetent than he is. And that's saying something because he's not too good. Yeah. No, I, I think it, it's, it is 
essential to have a secure border. I mean, you're you're really not a country unless you have a secure border. And secure elections. You know, absolutely secure elections. And so it's just essential to have a real border or we can't function as a country. And our service, you know, our central services are being overwhelmed in a lot of cities. And but I as we were talking about earlier, I think having a legal immigration process that is smooth and efficient and done well. And I'm speaking as someone who is a legal immigrant. And I think that that I mean, like one way to think of it is who do you want on your team? You know, who like who do you want on Team America? And I think we want to just say, OK, we we want to let in people who are going to, you know, be great contributors to our society and to our economy. And, you know, and who do you want on the team? And it's and it's not to say that like in my opinion, actually, I'd say like probably most of the illegal immigrants actually are 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 actually good, hardworking people. That's my opinion. But some are not. And and you just have this sort of adverse selection process where, you know, if somebody is, you know, if somebody is like, you know, has a career in theft or robbery, I don't understand what's taken them so long to get here because we are such a target rich environment. I mean, you know, why don't they why don't more people who have a career in, you know, bad things come in here sooner? Because it's I mean, it's a piece of cake to go rob, you know, houses in L.A. or New York compared to other parts of the world. And and in a lot of places in America, if if you try to stop the person who's robbing you, you'll be arrested. It's right. I mean, what what's happening with crime and our police are so good, but they're not allowed to do their job. But I have to tell you, Elon, I hate to say because it's such a downer to say it. I hate to say it. I hate it. But you have a lot of people that just shouldn't be. I think it's a much bigger number than you think. They're allowing again, they're allowing people from their jails. And if you were running one of these countries where they're coming from, you would have had all of them. As an example, Venezuela, their crime is down 72 percent. They're taking their drug dealers. They're taking, frankly, their prisoners. They're emptying out their prisons. They're taking their criminals, their murderers, their rapists, and they're they're delivering them into. But that's what that's what Castro did. Yeah, well, he did on a much smaller scale. You know, it was a much smaller scale. But this is a massive scale because this is being done worldwide. But here's what's happening. Crime all over the world is down. And where do you see the numbers that we have? You know, these this is migrant crime. This is crime that's going to be. And I saw it today in New York where somebody was knifed, where they raped the girlfriend of a man that stood there watching in New York in one of the shelters and started pulling out the knives. And bad things happen today. But this is happening every day. These are rough people. These are people that are in jail for murder and all sorts of things. And they're releasing them into our country and they're telling them, if you come back, we're going to kill you. We're going to give you the death penalty or kill you. So they don't want to come back. But these are rough people. Yeah. These, are, these are criminals that make our criminals look like nice people. And it's horrible what they're doing. And, and she's in charge of it because, you know, now she's trying to say she sure. had nothing to do with it. And she's such a liar because she was called the border czar the first day and it was on the headlines of every newspaper. She's the border czar. And she never even went there. She went to one location which had nothing to do with where the problem is. You know, she went in and out, right. I guess, because she was getting a lot of pressure. Yeah, but yeah. had nothing to do with the problem. Yeah. Is. But she was well, the border well, czar. And you, the people yeah, can't yeah. allow them to get away with their disinformation campaign. Now she's trying to say that uh, she wasn't... Uh, she wasn't really involved. And the whole thing is horrible. She was totally in charge. She could have shut the border down without him. He didn't know what he was doing anyway. So he wouldn't have even known yeah. what happened. You could shut the border down. He yeah. wouldn't even know the difference. But uh, the fact is that she was border czar. But if you don't have to call yes. her that. The fact is you could just call her. She was in charge of the border. And the border was the worst right. ever. It's it's simply not working. No, it's I horrible. Mean, whether whether it's by whether it's by whether it's a question of 
of intention or competence, either way, we don't have a secure border and we have people streaming over like it looks like a World War Z zombie apocalypse at times. And, you know, sometimes you've got to sort of wonder, like, is it real or not? So, you know, because you see things and you're like, is it real? So I went to the border at Eagle Pass and I saw for myself in Texas and I was like, okay, it's real. I'm like seeing this in real time. I actually posted the video like just live. I just flew there one day and just to see, hey, is this made up or real? And I'm just seeing people stream across the border. And I have to say, you know, at least the people I saw did not look friendly. You know, so people can look at my video and say, hey, you know, these people look friendly. They don't look super friendly. These are people that Elon would not be the same man if he had to walk across the street and look these people in the eye. These are rough people. These are really rough people coming across. And I know rough people. And these are people that we don't want in our country. And, you know, the caravans are coming in and they're putting and who's doing this is the heads of the countries. And you would be doing it. And so would I. And everyone say, oh, what a terrible thing to say. The fact is, it's brilliant for them because they're taking all of their bad people, really bad people. And I hate to say this. The reason the numbers are much bigger than you would think is they're also taking their nonproductive people. Now, these aren't people that will kill you. We have enough of them. But these are people that are nonproductive. They they are just not productive. I mean, for whatever reason, they're not workers or they don't want to work or whatever. And these countries are getting rid of nonproductive people in the caravans in many cases. And they're also getting rid of their murderers and their drug dealers and the people that are really brutal people. And they're coming into our country at levels that have never been seen before. And I saw an ad just before I got on the air. I'm walking over here and I saw an ad by Kamala saying how she is going to provide border security. Where has she been for three and a half years? For three and a half years, we have 20 million people for it. It's a terrible thing. Frankly, I think this is a fundamental existential issue for the United States. And if we have another four more years of open borders, and it's going to be even worse with another four more years, it's going to be even worse than it's been for the past three and a half years. I'm not sure we've got a country. You don't have a country. Elon, if they get in, you will have 50 to 60 million people from all over the world, not South America only. You know, we think of South America. We think of Honduras and El Salvador, Guatemala and Mexico, you know, the four. But it's not that it's everywhere. They're coming in from everywhere. And I had to stay in. Yeah, I think this is a this is a super important point. Like people, it's like basically when I went down there, I was like, well, where are people from? It's like it's like almost no one was from Mexico. No, Mexico. It's just it's just it's just the border. It's just the border with Mexico. But the people coming in, it's 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 Earth, the rest of Earth. And America is is only, you know, about four, four or five percent of the population of Earth. It would only take a few percent of the rest of us to overwhelm everything. We're already overwhelmed, Elon. We're overwhelmed. You had to see the news tonight about New York, New York. And I love that place. And what they're doing to it is horrible, what they're doing to it. And all the courts do is they try and focus on Trump. Okay, then let's focus on Trump, who did nothing wrong. I complain about our rigged election. Elon, what's happened is unbelievable. You have from Africa. Uh, from the Congo, they're coming from the Congo and 22 people came in from the Congo recently and they're murderers and they dropped them. They, they drop them. They take them out of jails, which is very expensive, you know, to maintain the jails. So they don't do too much maintaining, I can tell you. But they take them out of jails, prisons. They take them out and they bring them to the United States. They deposit them in the United States and say, don't ever come back. Or you're going to be executed and they don't want to come back. But they won't come back. Sure. But but they're coming from Africa. They're coming from Asia. They're coming from the Middle East. They're coming from South America. Well, they're Earth. coming from Rest everywhere. Earth, basically. And there are a lot of really yeah, bad Earth. ones. It's uh, just a, it's just it's just an everywhere on Earth uh, thing, and it's just it's just not possible for the United States to absorb you know everyone from Earth or or you know even a few percent of the rest of Earth. It's just not possible. So, well, Elon, we're going to have uh, just that's, to, that's, that's, uh, just yeah. to finish this up. We're going to have the largest deportation in history of this country. And we have no choice. Otherwise, we're going to have a country, what they've, what they've done to our country. Think of it uh, with, with, you know, in Venezuela and in some of these other countries, 
Crime is down 50, 60, 70, 80 percent. And you would be the same. You would have you would. Have, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what. Venezuela has not gotten rid of all of them. They've gotten rid of about 70 percent of their really bad people. Their jails are about 50 percent uh, put into the United States. The same with other countries. Sure. Some are at 30 percent. Some are at 50 percent. They're all different. But the bottom line is they're all going to be at 100 percent. Why wouldn't you put 100 percent? of yeah. And they're doing it right now. While this third rate phony candidate, don't forget, I beat I beat Biden. Uh, he failed in the debate miserably. And, you know, some people said, oh, gee, it's too bad. It's too bad he did so badly or I did well in the debate. You know, the first night they said, wow, one of the people at CNN said that was the greatest debate performance I've ever witnessed. And then two days later, they didn't talk about that. They just said he was bad. But that's OK. That's the way I get treated. And I don't mind that at all. What I can tell you is this. We cannot have a Democrat. We cannot have her. She's incompetent. She's as bad as Biden in a different. Yeah. Look, she hasn't done an interview I mean, since this whole yeah. uh, scam started. And and say what you want. This yeah. was a coup. This was a coup of a president of the United States. He didn't want to leave. And they said we can do it the nice yeah. way or we can do it the no. hard way. Yeah, I'm. Mean, they just took him out back behind the shed and basically shot him. Yeah, oh, they what they fired. did with this guy. So, and I'm no yeah. fan of his. And he was a horrible president, the worst president in history. And one of the reasons he was so bad, first of all, the Israeli attack would have never happened. Russia would never have attacked Ukraine. And we'd have no inflation. And we wouldn't have had the Afghanistan mess, if you think of it. Well, and we wouldn't have had Afghanistan. Yeah. But we think of well, it. We, yeah. we, you take a few of those events away and we have a different world. We would also have no, no, no inflation yeah. was caused by oil. Yeah, no, no. You, you, I think you're making an excellent point here, which is that um, when other countries can, you know, that that are, you know, are thinking about invading or doing bad things, uh, when they're thinking about that, they're thinking about okay, who, what's the American president going to do, and are, do they fear the American president, uh, or is there someone they they do not respect or and do not fear? And I think they they do they do they would. They would rightfully be, I mean, but, you know, look, look, look at that, the, the footage of the assassination. They're like, okay, you know, uh, uh, President Trump is, is, is like, don't mess with me. I mean, that's like, whereas I think people are, are not going to be, and they obviously have not been at all intimidated by, by Biden, and they certainly will not be intimidated by, by Kamala. And you have to really think of that in the context of global security. Um, that's, that that if the if the American president is someone someone that like you know evil dictators are scared of that makes a huge difference to the security of the world. So I had a good relationship with Putin despite the Russia 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 hoax that lasted for over two years, just a hoax created by Hillary Clinton and uh, Adam Shifty Schiff, some just bad people, you know, just sick people. Frankly, I mean, Schiff, Schiff is a sick person. He's going to end up probably being a senator. It's hard to believe. The whole thing is hard to believe. But, uh, the, you know, they put our country in danger with that stuff, too. They actually, when they make up stories, then you have to fight your way out of it for a long time. But I know Putin very well. I got along with him very well. He respected me, and it's just one of those things. And he would, we would talk a lot about Ukraine. It was the apple of his eye. But I said, don't ever do it. Don't ever do it. You know, I shut down Nord Stream 2. That was the big oil pipeline, the biggest, I think, the biggest pipeline in the world going all over Europe. I shut it down. Biden came. And then they say, yeah. I, I, you know, I was I loved Russia. I was a friend of Putin and I loved Russia. No, he actually said to me one time, he said, if you're my friend, I'd hate to see you as an enemy. I shut down his pipeline, the biggest pipeline. They were looking at that yeah. as a fund. And this this pathetic president gets in there. And the first thing he did, one of the early things he did is he shut down, he, he shut down Keystone XL pipeline, which is our pipeline that would have employed 48,000 people, pipeline workers, shuts it down. That was, uh, you know, a massive job that Obama refused to allow. Yeah. I allowed it in my first week because it was jobs and it moved oil. And by the way, in a much more environmentally friendly way, it's underground. It's not a truck that catches on fire or a train that catches on fire. But think of it. He shut down the uh, XL pipeline, the Keystone XL pipeline. Yeah. He shuts that down and he approves the Russian pipeline. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't make any right? sense. <laughs> it's like it's inconsistent. Um, certainly. the, but, but I mean, I, I think it's just worth emphasizing you know, to listeners the, 
that the that the, the, the immense importance of of whether the United States president is intimidating or not intimidating, um, and how much that matters to global security, uh, because uh, there's some real tough characters out there, and if they don't think the American president is tough, they will do what they want to do. I know every one um, of and them. And that puts, all, that, that put, that, it puts the yeah. whole world in danger. Elon, I know every one it's of them, and deal. I know them well. I know Putin, yeah. I know President Xi, I know Kim Jong-un of North Korea, I know every one of them. And let me tell you, people will say, oh, this is terrible. He said, I'm not saying anything good or bad. They're at the top of their game. They're tough, they're smart, they're vicious. And they're going to protect their country, whether they love their country. They probably do. It's just a different form of love, but they're going to protect their country. But yeah, these yeah. are tough people at the top of their game. And when they see a Kamala or when they see uh, a Biden, Sleepy Joe, they can't even believe yeah. it. They can't believe this happened. The, all the stuff that you're seeing now, all the horror that you look at Israel, they're all waiting for an attack from Iran. Iran would not be attacking, believe me. You know, when I was there and I say it. With respect, because I think we would have been good with Iran. I don't want to do anything bad to Iran, but they knew not to mess around. Iran was broke because I told China, if you buy from Iran oil, it's all about the oil. That's where the money is. But if you buy oil from Iran, you're not going to do any business with the United States. And I meant it. And they said, we'll yeah, pass. Yeah. They didn't buy oil. Other countries, likewise, sure. you want to buy, you're not doing business with the United States. And they, they were at a point where they were, they had no money for Hamas, they had no money for Hezbollah, they had no money for any of these instruments of terror, and it was amazing. In fact, there were articles when I was leaving, which is hard to believe, actually, especially when you look at what's happened to our country. Our country is so bad right now, it's such a different place. We were respected. Think of it, four years ago, we were so respected to a point where when I said don't buy oil, they didn't buy oil, but they had no money yeah, yeah. and Israel would have never been attacked. It is zero chance. And again, I said to Vladimir Putin, I said, don't do it. You can't do it, Vladimir. You do it. It's going to be a bad day. You cannot do it. And I told him things that what I do. And he said, no way. And I said, way. And, you know, it's the last time we ever had the conversation. He would, he would never have done, I got along well with him. I hope to get along with, well with him again. You know, getting along well with them is a good thing, not a bad thing. I got along well with yeah. Kim Jong-un. When I met with President Obama just before entering, you know, it's a, sort of a ritual. And I sat down with him and we talked. It was supposed to be for a very short period of time. It turned out to be a long period of time. I said, what's the biggest problem? He said, North Korea. I had that problem worked out very quickly. It was nasty at the beginning with Rocket Man and, you know, all the different things. Yeah. But all of a sudden, I got so, so a call. Those, some, those all, were some epic tweets, by the way. Yeah, they were, really no, they were free. epic everything. He said, <laughs> he said that he has a red button on his desk. I said, I have a red button on my desk, too, but my red button is much bigger, and my red button works. And then I called him yeah. Little Rocket Man of Little Rocket Man. Anyway, here's the bottom line. All of a sudden, I got a call from him. And they said they want to meet. They want to meet me. And we met, yeah. as you remember, we met in Singapore. We met also in Vietnam. And uh, I got along with them great. We yeah. were in no danger. It, but President yeah. Obama, it's President it's Obama so thought we were going to end up in yeah. a war, a nuclear war with him. And let me tell you, he's yeah, got a lot of true. nuclear stuff, it's, too. Exactly. He's got plenty of nuclear. It's, he can do plenty it's, of damage. It's, 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 so. Yes. I mean, it's because, you know, I mean, people like, like, Kim, Kim, you know, Kim Jong Un. They respond to strength, yeah. not weakness. Well, he, uh, and, 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 he and I got, and, he and I had a good strength, relationship. They, you know, you remember, I, yeah. remember, I met him, and and we walked onto his land. Nobody ever walked onto his land before. I walked onto. I wouldn't say. <laughs> yeah. Let's bring up cool. Secret Service again. I wouldn't say they were thrilled when I did that. I walked onto his land, and uh, it was, it was an amazing period. But we were not in danger with him because of me. You know, I always yeah. say that we have enemies on the outside and we have enemies on the inside. We have some really bad people in our government and people that are and controlling of the people. I mean, I mentioned names, but I, I don't I really don't want to give them the credit. But we have some really bad. And I say they're more dangerous than Russia and China. If, if you have a, a smart president, a president that gets it, we are not in danger from those countries because they need us and they need our help. I mean, we forced Obama, if you think about it, Obama and Biden and Bush to a certain extent, in all fairness, forced Russia 
and China together. And if you're a history student, the first thing you learn is you cannot let Russia and China align. But then they also got, if you take a look, Iran, and they have North Korea. That's, you know, they call it the access of evil. In the old days, you had the access of evil. Here we have a modern day access of evil. These are powerful countries, very heavy nuclear, which is the biggest threat. Yeah. You know, the biggest threat is not global warming, where the ocean's going to rise one, one eighth of an inch over the next 400 years. The big, and you'll have more, you'll have more oceanfront property, right? The biggest threat is not that. The biggest threat is nuclear warming, because we have five countries well, now that yeah. have significant nuclear power, and we have to not allow anything to happen with stupid people like Biden. You know, Biden uh, did something with Russia. Uh, there was no chance of him ever going in. And when I left and then I, then after I left, they started forming big armies on their on the border with Ukraine. Right. And I looked at that and I thought he was doing that because Putin's a good negotiator. I thought he was doing that to negotiate. But then Biden started saying such stupid things. For instance, he said that. Uh, it can be a NATO country. Now, put, Russia, for for as long as there's been NATO, has said, we're never going to agree to that. And we go right up front and say that. And we did things and said things through this president with a low IQ, very low IQ. He had a low IQ 30 years ago, by the way, but now he might not even have a IQ at all. There is no, there's nothing on the board that goes this low. He said things that were so stupid that 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 war would have been that war had zero chance of happening if I were there. Zero chance. He was saying everything yeah. the opposite, everything the opposite. And it's so sad because many more people have been killed in Ukraine than you read about. You don't read about how bloody it is and how does it sure. hey, look just in the two armies. You lost a half a million people. And, yeah. uh, and you know, right, Ukraine's sure. having a hard time. Ukraine. I don't know if you saw yeah. the article recently and it's true. You don't hear the true story. But if you think about it, uh, Russia's gone, you know, Russia defeated Germany with us and they defeated Napoleon. You know, they've been around a long time. They're a big fighting force yeah, so, and it's course. very unfair. And Ukraine now doesn't have enough men. They're now using young men and very old men to fight. And it's, it, we're in a very bad position and I'm not going to blame exclusively, but I can tell you, I could have stopped that and, a smart president could have stopped that. It wouldn't have happened. But we had a, we had yeah. a man that actually made it it made it more prevalent. It, it it was so bad. The words that he was using, the stupid threats coming from a stupid face that that he was using. I said, this guy's going to cause us a war. He's going to cause us. And let me tell you, yeah, it yeah. can lead to World War Three. That can lead to World War Three. The Middle East can lead to. We have numerous places that could end up in yeah. World War Three right now. For no reason whatsoever. No, I think you're right. I think I think people under underrate the risk of World War Three, and it's just the, the, you know when, when looking at the risk of global thermonuclear warfare, it's game over for humanity. And you know that's it's something that people have I think after the end of the Cold War, people have become complacent about, but they actually have forgotten that there are currently a lot of nuclear missiles. That, 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 are, that, that have targeting parameters for the United States and other countries. And one of the things and, we're going to do uh, is we're going to build yeah. an Iron Dome over us. We're, you know, Israel has it. We're going to have the best Iron Dome in the world. We need it. And we're going to make it all in the United States. But we're going to have, we're going to have protection because it just takes one maniac to, you know, start something. We're going to have protection. And we're going to have, why shouldn't we have an Iron Dome? Israel has one. Some other places yeah. have one that nobody even knows about, frankly. But uh, Israel has it. We're going to have an Iron Dome. But, you know, with all of that being said, to me, that's so important, the most important. But with all of that being said, the election's coming up and the people want to hear about the economy and the fact that Absolutely they can't sure. buy groceries because they don't have enough money to buy groceries. The inflation has killed them. Food prices are up 50, 60, even 100 percent in some cases. And this this stupid administration allowed this to happen. And it's a shame. And that's the thing that people most care about, in my opinion. They care about the border a lot. And we discuss the border at great length. It's, it's nice to have yeah, a yeah. forum like this where I can discuss something at length. And by the way, do you think Biden could do this interview? Do you think that Kamala <laughs> could do this interview? They would take a pass no, on you. No, they could not. So the, the, they don't need Elon. They don't need Elon screaming out questions. 
it's it's pretty sad when you think that somebody that does this for a living can't answer a question or is afraid to do an interview. And in her case, with a very friendly interview, she's got all friendly interviewers. It's pretty yes, sad. Absolutely. But the big thing now is the well, economy, that, 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 Elon. Yeah. And as much as yeah. I mean, I view nuclear as the single most important thing, but a lot of people don't. A lot of people don't understand that. But it doesn't have to. If I understand it, that's all you need. Because if I was president, you're not going to have that kind of a problem. But the the thing that they really is making them angry is what Kamala and Biden have allowed to happen to the economy. It's a disaster with inflation. The inflation. It yeah. doesn't matter what you make. The inflation is eating you alive. If you're a worker. Or if you're a a uh, just a, a middle income person, you can't afford. You know, four years ago, five years ago, people were saving a lot of money. Today, they're using yeah. all their money and borrowing money just to live. It's it's a horrible thing right. that's happening, and we'll end that well, quickly. I think a lot of, uh, yeah, a, a, a lot of people just don't understand, don't understand where inflation comes from. Um, inflation comes from government overspending because the checks never bounce when it's written by the government. So if the if the, if the government uh, spends far more than it brings in, that increases the money supply. And if the money supply increases faster than the rate of goods and services, sure. that's inflation. Um, so, so really, we need to have uh, we, we need to reduce our government spending, um, and we need to re-examine. I think we, I think we need like a government efficiency commission to say like, hey, where are we spending money that's sensible? Where is it not sensible? Right. Um, and and we need to live within our our means. We we we're, we're currently adding, uh, I think, a trillion dollars to the deficit uh, every roughly right. every hundred days. That's right. um, and you know the the interest payments on the national debt have now exceed the defense budget. It's a, on the order of a trillion dollars. It's interest, and it's and it keeps it keeps yeah. growing. I rebuilt our military, largely rebuilt our military. Did a great job on it, which was so important. You know, we had jets, we had fighters that were. Uh, and bombers that were 70 years old. And we, we did a great job in that. Then we, by the way, then we gave 85 billion of it back to Afghanistan, if you can believe it. We gave them 85 billion. You know, they're one of the largest sellers yeah. of military equipment in the world. They're selling what we gave them. That was one of the most embarrassing days in the history of our country. But, uh, if you think about, go, let's go back to the, uh, the economy. We have to bring energy yeah. prices down. Energy started it. The price of gasoline. Now your cars don't require too much gasoline, so you know you're you have a good and you do make a great product. I have to say, I have to be honest with uh, you. Thank that you. doesn't mean everybody should have an electric car, but these are minor details. But your your product is incredible. But but the thank gasoline, you. Elon, is the 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 cost of energy. Not only gasoline, it's the cost of heating your house and cooling your house. That sure. has to come down. It, it's gone up a hundred percent, a hundred and fifty and two hundred percent. And that has to come down. When that comes down and we're going to yeah. drill, baby drill, you know, they stopped drilling and then they went back to drilling because they went, went back to the Trump policy. But if they won the day after they get into office, we're going to, this country will go out of business because they're going to go to an energy policy that's not sustainable. Wind and different things. You're not going to have anything. Yeah. And and I know you're a big fan of the AI. <laughs> and I have to say yeah. that AI, and this is shocking to me, but AI requires twice the energy that the country already produces for everything. So we, you're going to have to build, we're going to have to build a lot of energy if our country will be competitive with China, because that's our primary competitor for this on the AI. You're sure. going to need a lot of well, electricity. I mean, you're going to need tremendous yeah. electricity like almost double what we produce now for the whole country, if you can believe it. Sure. Um, well, just going, you know, back to this, like the, this, this, this basic thing, which that people try to make it sound complicated, but it's not, but inflation is caused by government overspending. Right. Um, would, would you, would you agree that, that we need to take a look at government spending yes. and, 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 and have perhaps like a government efficiency commission, uh, that, that, just look, tries to make the spending sensible and so the country lives within its means, just like a, just like a person The does. waste is incredible and it's, it, nobody negotiates it prices. Uh, you used to have a lot of people making jets and you end up with two companies and they'll probably try and merge at some point. You, you, I mean, I, I went through it like Air Force, just a, a thing like Air Force One. One of the first documents they asked me to sign a general officer, sir, will you please sign this document? What is it? Air Force One. That's with Boeing. 
which is basically two planes, two 747s. And the price was $5.7 yeah. billion dollars for two planes. Now, <laughs> wow. now they're highly sophisticated. <laughs> That's insane. They're even nicer than your plane, okay, but much more sophisticated. They're very – I won't say what's on it, but they got a lot of stuff on it. Anyway, but it's 5.7. I, that's, a, that's a crazy that's number. That's a crazy number. But I said, I'm not going to pay 5.7. I'm not going to do it. I said, who made the deal? Obama and his people. I said, well, then I know the deal's no good. I'm not going to do it. And over a course of about four weeks, by my saying I'm not going to do it, I got the price reduced by $1.6 billion for the exact same plane, other than we had a nicer paint job, if you want to know the truth. But for the exact same plane, I got, I saved one. And I said to Boeing, Man, you guys must make a lot of money if you can reduce the price by that. But now what I do hear is that they're going back to the uh, Biden administration and wanting big cost overruns, you know, because they see these dopey suckers in there and they'll end up getting uh, some of the money back. But I saved it by one point six billion dollars for the exact same plan. And, and you can now take that and multiply that out times thousands of other exactly. items. Multiply yeah, the numbers are and, yeah. astronomical. Yeah. I agree with you. Well, uh, I mean, if, so, so, I mean, I mean, I, I think it would be great to just have a government efficiency commission that takes a look at, uh, at, at these things and and just ensures that the taxpayer money, the, the taxpayer's hard-earned money is spent in a good way. Um, and and, I, and I'd, I'd be happy to help out on such a commission. I'd love if, it. If it were formed. Well, you, you're the greatest cutter I mean, I look at what you do. You walk in and you just say, you want to quit? They go on strike. They, I won't mention the name of the company, but they go on strike and you say, that's okay. You're all gone. You're all gone. So every one of you is gone and you are the greatest. You would be very good. Oh, you would love it. But, you know, if you look at Argentina. Well, I'd be happy to yeah, By the that. way, congratulations. Yeah. I just looked at the number of people that are listening to you and I chat. We'll call it a chat. But uh, yeah. congratulations. This is very good. I mean, it's great. It's, and, and you're an interesting character. You know, the uh, new head of a place called Argentina, and he was he's a big, Malaysia you know, he's, he's great. And yeah. he's a big MAGA fan, you know, that he ran on MAGA. And he took it to an extreme, too. He ran on MAGA, and I hear he's doing really a terrific job. It's called Make Argentina Great Again. It worked out perfectly. He came in, he bought a lot of hats, he brought over it. But he's, he's doing a big job. He really cut. And I'm hearing yeah. they're starting to do pretty well. Inflation's getting down. You know, they had like 2,000%. Yeah, exactly. They had inflation like, like not normal inflation. They had the, the real deal. But we're going to yeah. have that pretty soon. We, we have, I think yeah. we have the worst inflation we've had in a hundred years. They say it's 48 years. I don't believe it. I think we have the worst. Yeah. They don't include a lot of the items that should be included. You know? Yeah. Well, it's, 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 it's just from, from government overspending and, and not, just not spending taxpayer money yeah. e effectively. And, and having, you know, just depart, like so many departments, you, you can't even name them all. Um, and what Malay is doing, um, is, you know, he's, he's cutting government spending, he's, he's simplifying things, he's, uh, ha having, you know, putting in regulations that make sense. And I, and, and, and we're, Argentina o overnight is experiencing uh, a giant improvement right. in prosperity, but but it's also a lesson for the United States, which is that um, Argentina used to be one of the most prosperous countries in the world, um, you know, in, in the like in the in the thirties, forties, and and because of bad government policy, it ruined the country. And and if you take Venezuela for example, Venezuela should be incredibly prosperous. They they have you know phenomenal. Uh, reserves of uh, everything, oil, everything, and uh, it the, should be prosperous. But if the government's wrong, it it impoverishes the people. And so I think we should not be complacent in the United States and thinking that and taking our prosperity for granted, because if, if with bad government policy we can run the country into the ground. And that that's that's just something people should bear in mind. Don't take prosperity for granted. Well, well think of education. So we're ranked at the bottom of every list of the top 40. We're ranked number 40, number 38. Uh, Norway, uh, Switzerland, Sweden, uh, different countries are ranked good. Actually, China's pretty close to the top. They're a top six or seven. But we're ranked at the bottom, almost at the bottom, 38, 39, 40. In other words, horrible. And yet we spend more per pupil than any other country in the world. So we spend more. 
And what I'm going to do, one of the first acts, and this is where I, I need an Elon Musk. I need somebody that has a lot of strength and courage and smarts. I want to close up Department of Education, move education back to the states where, yeah. where, where states like Iowa, where states like Idaho, you know, not every state will do great because states that basically aren't doing good now, you look at uh, Gavin Newsom, the governor of California, he, uh, he's terrible. He does a terrible job. So he's not going to do great with education. But of the, of yeah. the 50, I would bet that 35 would do great. And, 15 yeah. of them or, you know, 20 of them will be as good as Norway. You know, Norway is considered great. Uh, you can name them. I mean, just they're so good. Some yeah. of these countries are so good. But if if you go into some of these really well-run states, you know, we have states that don't know what debt is. We have states that are have low taxes, no debt, everybody working. You know, they're really well-run. Sure. And maybe they have certain advantages in terms of location, in terms of, you know, the land or the, the sun, the sun and the water and the whole thing. You know, there are a lot of advantages that some people have. But if you move education back to the 50, you'll have some that won't do well, but you'll have, but it, they'll actually be forced to do better because it'll be a pretty bad situation. But, yeah, but if you think about well, it, yeah. you'll have some yeah, of yeah. these states. I'll bet you'd have 30, 35 states. It'll be much better. And you know what it'll cost? Less than half. Yeah what it is in, in uh, Washington. And yeah. these people don't care about well, yeah. the students in these, you know, faraway states. And it would be, well, be unbelievable. Yeah. I think you're making a good point in that um, if, if the states have to, have to if, if, if each individual, if each state has to compete against other states, then, pe then people will naturally right. uh, move to, to states where it's better. Well, like California, um, you know, as we said, it's, it's a badly run state. I could go through, I got so many friends that, are in those states, even if they're Democrats. I hate to mention certain states, but Illinois is badly run with Pritzker. He's a he's a real loser. But yeah. but you know this, some of these places are just badly run. But you know it's almost going to force them to run better, and they won't do a good at initially. But but can, you're not going to do worse than you're doing right now. And I would say that yeah. the cost you would cut your cost by fifty or sixty percent. And you'd have a little yeah, monitor. Yeah. You know, you want to make sure they're teaching English as an example. You know, give us yeah. a little English, right? Sure. Right? Yeah. No, but no, I mean, to, to, to what? I mean, I mean, some of these governors are, are like, are, are doing so badly. I mean, they, they got so many people moving out of their state. They should, they should get U-Haul Salesman of the Year award <laughs> because they're driving so much U-Haul. It's sales. actually amazing. It's just people, people moving it, out. Isn't it you know? amazing <laughs> to you as a businessman that they can even survive? Like Illinois. So many people are leaving, and you wonder, how do they survive? I mean, how do they survive? Uh, I saw where you left California, and you moved to Texas. Texas does a great job. Uh, but, you know, yeah. I mean, I just wonder, how do these states survive when big businesses, a, a big oil company just left California, as you know, and they moved to Texas. How do these big states survive when they lose so many businesses and their taxes are already really high. You know, their taxes are among the highest taxes. Yeah. You, you almost wonder, how do they, how do they continue on? And in many cases, the governors don't do a good job and they're crime ridden places. You wonder, how do they continue to just go on? It's, it's not, it's well, not I, a good I, I situation. Think I mean, I think the thing that's, the only thing that's going to force some of these states to change is if they risk bankruptcy and they're not getting bailed out by the federal right. government. Right. Well, that, you're, that's you're the only thing that's that. going to get them changed. You remember the area yeah. in California where they had that, where I guess uh, somebody had sticky fingers and they stole a lot of money. And uh, they went into a, a form of chapter. And it was very nasty yeah, yeah. for a period of time. But now it's probably the most popular place in all of California. So, so you know, at some point, something like that may have to happen. But the problem is, uh, you can't penalize people that loan money to the state when you have incompetent people like a Pritzker. Look, the family didn't want him in the family business. And, uh, then he ends up being governor of Illinois. So, you know, why is he going to be, is he going to be a great governor? And, uh, you know, you, you have people. I could name every one of them. I got to know every one of yep. these and some are very good and some are just horrible. Well, I think that, I mean, the larger point here, too, you know, as, you, as you're saying, like the, you know, a lot of people are concerned about the economy, a lot of people are concerned about inflation, and inflation is effectively a tax on people that, that, that save money, yeah. and, and, and for people that are working day to day, it's, it's, it's just, a, it's just a form of taxation. 
Um, and uh, and if, if we can solve the government spending problem, we'll solve the inflation problem, which means people will have a better standard of living. Yeah. And that's that's a really big deal. Well, the people that got hurt um, worst are the people that did it the way they were taught to do it all through, you know, their younger life and their their young life and their whole life. The people that saved money and then they got no interest on their money and inflation destroyed them. And frankly, they were almost better off if they didn't do anything like that. I mean, those people have been absolutely decimated. And we're going to bring those people back and help those people. We've got to get the prices down. You know, when I look at bacon costing five, four or five times more than it did a few years sure. ago, when, when you look at some of the food products and, and groceries, those people go, they can't believe it. They used to be able to buy a whole cart and today, you know, a lot of people just don't have the money. They go in and they can't buy anything. They, they look at, yeah, it's, it's sticker it's, shop. They it, call it sticker yeah. shop, right? I, I think it really just comes, like I said, I think it just comes down to, to, to really, I guess two, really two, two things, which is, is that if, if you solve government overspending, you solve inflation, which improves the living right. standards of the, of the, the average person. And then, and then if, if you uh, deregulate, like have sensible regulations, so because a lot of the, re the regulations are nonsensical and, and cause uh, the cost to be extreme for no reason, um, and the, the, but unless you've got effective deregulation, like Reagan did, did a great job on deregulation in the 80s, but it's been 40 years since we had an, right. anyone really, I mean, it, it, during your administration, we, we made some progress, but I think uh, the opportunity to make, I think, radical progress with sensible regulation um, and, yeah. uh, and, and, and if, if, if well, Elon, we, uh, th those two things, yeah, those are the big yeah, deals. We set a record. We said we did more deregulation and more uh, restrictions on all of the different businesses than any other president. I remember I had the rule for every one we put in, you have to get rid of t at 10 or 12. And we, we did <laughs> yeah. radical cuts on all of that. And a lot of that's being put back by this administration. And we did radical cuts on things that weren't necessary. But we were we were all set. You know, we had the best economy ever maybe in the world, and then what happened is COVID came in, and we had a focus on that, and nobody knew what it was. And I always say I got good marks on economy, good marks on military. We knocked out ISIS. We did so many different things. We rebuilt. But, you know, I never got the credit that we really deserved on what we did with, with COVID. We never got the credit. But uh, we were – if had that not happened, a gift from China, from Wuhan – uh, came in from Wuhan, the Wuhan labs, and I always said it, and it turned out to be right. But had that not, yeah. had that not happened, we were set to start reducing, uh, debt. We were going to reduce taxes further. I gave the largest tax cuts, and we were going to reduce taxes still further for middle income people, not only businesses. But we did it for businesses because sure. they're the ones that, that's why we had the great job numbers. But we were set to really start reducing debt. And, you know, we, we're sitting on the, the biggest pile of liquid gold anywhere in the world, bigger than Saudi Arabia, bigger than Russia. And we were going to drill and we were going to make so much money. We were going to supply Europe with oil. I had stopped the Russian pipeline and we were going to supply them with oil and gas. We were going to, we were going to make a fortune. And then, uh, the COVID came in and we had a, we really had to divert. Then what happened is when they came in, you know, we, we kept a lot of businesses alive. If I didn't do what we did, we would have had a 1929 type depression. But the problem is when Biden came in, he got trillions of dollars and just started spending it stupidly. You didn't need it anymore. You know, we got over that bad period where it was everybody was dying and, you know, it was it was just not a good period. Interestingly, uh, you know, during his administration, many more people died during his administration of COVID than during my administration, and we really got the brunt of it. But people don't realize more people died during his administration than ours. But it diverted us from doing what I wanted to do. But we had the greatest for, you know, almost three years. We had the yeah. great, and you know that probably better than anybody. So many of your friends said to me, the best years we've ever had in business were during the Trump years. And, and also said that, uh, African American, uh, Hispanic American were so incredible. They were having the best Asian American women, men, young people without a diploma, young people that graduated from the best colleges, from, from MIT, from the Wharton School, from all of the great colleges, Harvard. They were doing better and people without a diploma were doing better. 
and everybody was was happy. And then COVID came, and we had, a, sure. we had the problem is they spent trillions and trillions of dollars they wasted. They shouldn't have taken any money, and we wouldn't be having inflation right now, which is killing our country. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and absolutely. I mean, I should probably say something about, like, you know, maybe, maybe my views on, you know, climate change yeah. and oil and gas. Um, because uh, I think I'm probably different from what most people would assume. Because um, my, my views are actually pretty, I think, moderate in this regard, which is that I, I don't think we should vilify the oil and gas industry and the people that have worked very hard in those industries to provide the necessary energy to, su to support the economy. And, and if we were to stop using oil and gas right now, uh, we would all be starving and the economy would collapse. Uh, so it's, you know, I don't think it's right to sort of vilify the oil and gas industry. Um, and, and I, and I, you know, the, and the, the world, the world has a certain demand for oil and gas and it's probably better if the United States provides that than, than, than some other countries. Sure. Um, and, and, it, and it would it would help with prosperity in the U.S. Um, and at, at the same time, obviously, my view is is like we do over time want to move to um, a sustainable energy economy because eventually you do run out of I mean you run out of oil and gas it's, it's not there for, it's not infinite um, and there is there is some risk I think it's not the risk is not as as high as uh, you know a lot of people say it is with respect to global warming but I think. If, 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 you, if you just keep increasing the cost of million in the atmosphere uh, long enough, eventually it actually simply gets uncomfortable to uh, to breathe. <laughs> People don't realize this. If, if, the, if you go to, if you go past a thousand cost per million of, of CO2, uh, you start getting headaches and nausea. Um, and so we're, we're we're now in the sort of 400 range. We're adding, I think, about roughly two parts per million per year. So, I mean, it still gives us, so what it means is like, we still have quite a bit of time, um, but, but, so there's not like, we don't need to, to rush and, and we don't need to like, you know, stop farmers from farming or, you know, uh, prevent people from having steaks or right. <laughs> basic stuff right. like that. Like, like you leave, leave the farmers alone. I agree. <laughs> How crazy opinion. is that where, <laughs> I mean, you have farmers that are not allowed to farm anymore and have to get rid of their cattle and the whole, the whole world yeah, is a little silly. crazy, but, it's largely taken its lead from us. I, I do say, though, I've heard in terms of the fossil fuel, because even to uh, create your electric car and create the electricity needed for the electric car, uh, you know, fossil fuel is what really creates that at the generating plants. And, you know, so you sort of can't get away from it at this moment. I mean, someday you might be able to. But I do hear we have anywhere from 100 to 500 years left. You know, much of it hasn't even been found yet. Yeah. But there are tremendous, like Anwar. I got Anwar in Alaska approved. Ronald Reagan couldn't do it. Nobody could do it. Everybody tried. Nobody could do it. I got it approved. The first thing that Biden did was unimprove it, it to, to uh, get rid of it. He uh, ended yeah. it. His uh, his secretary went in and she ended it. And what a what a disgrace. That's Anwar. That's bigger, or they, they think it could be bigger than Saudi Arabia in Alaska. Could be bigger than Saudi Arabia. But they went in and they terminated it. And I'll get it going very quickly because not only is it big for Alaska. I mean, you talk about economic development. That for the United States. I mean, that that is, they say bigger than Saudi Arabia or the same size. And pure, really yeah. good stuff. And, you know, they end it. So I think we have, you know, perhaps hundreds of years left. Nobody really knows. But during that, uh, yeah. during that time, I, I mean, I, something my, will my, come around that will yeah. be very good. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, and my, my estimate would be, you know, a little more uh, aggressive than that. But it's, it's not the sort of like we're all going to die in five years stuff. That, that's obviously BS. Um, but, I mean, my view is like if you just look at sort of the past a million uh, that increments every year, you know, you get sort of two or three parts per million every year of, of CO2. Uh, I mean, my, I, I think some of that, it, it's problematic if it accelerates, if you start going from two or three right. to, say, five. And then there may be some situations where uh, you get uh, just a step change increase in the CO2. Mm -hmm. um, and and I, I think it, we, don't, we don't want to get too close to 1,000 uh, ppm because, like, that's that's actually makes it uncomfortable to to, to – to breathe, like just existing in, in a thousand ppm CO2 is, is uncomfortable. That's, that's like a, it, it, that's considered like an industrial hazard. Right. <laughs> just, so, so it's, you know, that's, that's actually, you start getting headaches and stuff. So it's, 
even without global warming, it's not, it's not comparable to last year. You don't want to get too close to that. But I mean, I think we've got, I think we want to just move over and like, and if, if, I don't know, 50 to 100 years from now, we're, um, we're, we're, I don't know, mostly sustainable. I think that'll probably be okay. Um, so it's, it's, it's not like the, the house is on, on fire immediately, but it, it, I think it, it is something we, we need to, to move towards. And on, you know, on balance, it's probably better to move there faster than slower. But, but like I said, without vilifying the oil and gas industry, uh, and, and, and without causing hardship in the short term, I think this can be done, um, with, without, you know, but people can still have, you know, a stake and they can still, it, it drive gasoline cars yeah. and this, you know, it's, it's, it's okay. It's like, it's not, I don't think we should vilify people for it, but I think we should just, just generally lean in the direction of, of sustainability. Um, and, uh, I, I actually think solar is, is going to be a majority of, of us, uh, energy generation, uh, in the future. And it's certainly trending that mm-hmm. way. And, and so you get the solar power, um, combine that with, with, with batteries. So up, because obviously the sun doesn't shine at night. And, uh, and they use that to charge the electric cars and you have a long-term sustainable solution. And, you know, that's, that's what Tesla is trying to move things towards. And I think we've made a lot of progress and progress in that regard. But when you look at our cars, we, 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 like, we don't believe that environmentalism, that caring about the environment should, should mean that you have to suffer. So we make sure that our cars are, are beautiful, that they drive well, that they're fast, they're, you know, sexy. I mean, they're, they're, they're cool. In fact, literally, <laughs> I mean, the sexy joke, Model S, Model 3, Model X and Y spells out sexy. It's probably the most expensive joke out there. Um, <laughs> but I, you know, I just, I don't know, I like cheesy humor, you know, so, um, and, but, but I'm, I'm, I can, I'm a big fan of like, let's have an inspiring future and let's, yeah. uh, let's work towards, you know, a, a better future and, and, and we do so without demonizing. Right. I'm, um, I'm okay. You know. you know, it's very interesting. Uh, you use the word global warming and, Today they use the word climate change because, you know, you have some places that go up and you said, so they were getting themselves in a little trouble with the, the word global warming because not every place is warming. Some places are going the opposite direction. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sort of waiting for you to come up with solar panels on the roofs of your cars and on the trunks of the cars. And it just seems like something that at some point you will come up with. I'm sure you'll be the first, but it would seem that a solar panel on on the roofs, you know, on flat surfaces, on certain surfaces might be good. Yeah. At least in certain areas of the country where you have the or the world sure. where you have the sun. But I would I would think, and I have no idea because that's not my world. But I would think that this would be uh, something that would be interesting. But you know, the one thing that I don't understand is that people talk about global warming or they talk about climate change, but they never talk about nuclear warming. And to me, sure. that's an immediate problem. Because you have, as I said, five countries where you have major nuclear and, and, you know, probably some others are getting there and that's very dangerous. That's where you need a strong American president because you just, you don't want to have this proliferation. But you have five countries and getting more, you know, China is much less than us right now, but they're, they're going to catch us sooner than people think. They're way lower. Russia and us are number one and I mean, we're sort of tied. And China is far behind, but they're developing at a level that, you know, you're not surprised to hear very fast. It's going to, they'll end up catching up, maybe even surpassing. Yeah. But to me, the biggest problem yeah. is not uh, climate change. It's not, and, and, and everything's, you know, a problem, but it's degrees. To me, the big problem is the uh, nuclear power. The power of nuclear is so great. And when I talk yeah, about yeah, I'll, prevent world, yeah, I'll awesome. prevent world War Three, yeah. oh. uh, I will. But but the truth is that you have to because this is no longer army tanks going back and forth and shooting at each other. This is yeah. a level of destruction and power that nobody's ever seen before. Yeah, and actually, it, 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 there's, the, there's the bad side of nuclear, which is a nuclear war, very bad side. But there's there's also I think. Um, Nuclear electricity generation is underrated. You're right. Um, and it's actually, you know, people have this fear of, of nuclear, um, nuclear electricity generation. Um, but, but it's actually one of the safest forms of electricity generation. It's, it's, it's just a huge misunderstanding. Um, and, uh, if you look at the injuries and deaths, you know, caused by, say, I mean, I'm not going to try to pick on coal mining, but just any kind of mining operation. Right. 
And this was a number of injuries and deaths per year. And you compare that to nuclear, nuclear is actually way better. So it's underrated as an electricity source, and I think it's something that's worth reconsidering. But there's so much regulation that people can't get it done. So that, you know. Maybe they'll have to change the name. The name is a rough name. There are some areas, like when you see what happened. Good bad branding. We'll have to rebrand it. We'll have to give it a good name. We'll name it after you or something. You know, hey, it has a branding problem. You know, when you see what happened. It does have a branding problem. When you see what happened in Japan, where they say you won't be able to go on the land for about 3,000 years. Did you ever see that? And in Russia, where they had the problem, where they, you know, there's a lot of bad things happened. And they have a problem. And they say that in 2,000 years, people will start to occupy the land again. You know, you realize it's pretty bad. No, that's not true. But there's, you're right about it. It's amazing. It's actually not that bad. So, like, after Fukushima happened in Japan, like, people were asking me in California, you know, are we worried about, like, a nuclear cloud coming from Japan? I'm like, no, that's crazy. It's actually, it's not even dangerous in Fukushima. I actually flew there and ate locally grown vegetables on TV to prove it. And I donated a solar water treatment, a solar power system for a water treatment plant. Yeah, but you haven't been feeling so well lately, and I'm worried about it. No, no, but I mean, it's fine, you know. It's like, you know, Hiroshima and Nagasaki were bombed, but now they're like full cities again. So it's really not something that, you know. It's not as scary as people think, basically. Let's see. I mean, are there some other topics we should touch on? Oh, you know, like lawfare, I think, you know, we need to be concerned about. What they've done to this country. Obviously. Yeah. Well, we just won the big case in Florida. This was the Biden administration did something that's never been done in this country, and that's go after their political opponent, me, with this nonsense and just nonsense. And the big case in Florida we won, but they always pick a judge and a jury. And they use local DAs. They use the local attorney generals like Fani, you know, Fani, spelled F-A-N-I, Fani. And it's all a big hoax. And it's all run from there. Like in Manhattan, one of the top people from the Justice Department went in, ran Manhattan, ran the state. The Letitia James deal was run by a person from the Department of Justice, Biden. They've never done this before. And they set up a very bad precedent. It's called lawfare, warfare. It's a terrible thing and never happened in our country. It does happen in banana republics and third world countries, but it's never happened. And the incredible thing is it actually drove my numbers up because people see, you know, fortunately, I have a platform like you or, you know, in all fairness, like a conversation like this where I can talk about it and people understand. I mean, you fight for election integrity and you end up getting indicted because you're fighting for election integrity. And when the day comes that you can't fight for election integrity, you don't have a country anymore. So what happens, what happens is they went after their political opponent, me. Now, Biden's, you know, close to vegetable stage, in my opinion. OK, I looked at him today on the beach and I said, why would anybody allow him? The guy could barely walk. Why would anybody allow him? Does he have a political advisor that thinks this looks good? You know, he thinks this looks good because it looks so bad and it's it's ridiculous. I mean, and he's been doing that for a long time. You know, he can't lift the chair. The chair weighs about three ounces. It's meant for children and old people to lift. And he can't lift it. The whole thing is crazy. It's clearly I mean, it's clearly like we just don't have a president. You don't have a president. And she's going to be worse than him because he is a San Francisco liberal who destroyed San Francisco. And then as attorney general, she destroyed California. You talk about location and we're talking about the sun and the water and all. There's nothing better than California. She has destroyed that. She was the original D.A. She was the original in San Francisco. She was the original attorney general in California. What she has done to California is, well, you know better than I do. You just left California for a lot of those reasons. And what she's done with with crime, with with cashless bail, where you kill somebody. I mean, we have states there. You kill somebody and they let you out right away. I mean, you, you don't have to even put up and then they never find the people unless they kill again. And then they let them out again. 
Our country is becoming a very dangerous place. And she is a radical left San Francisco liberal. And now she's trying to protect. Now she's looking like she's she wants to be more Trump than Trump, if that's possible. I don't think it's possible. But she wants to be more Trump than well, Trump. Yeah. I want a wall. I, I, I want, think that's. You know, yeah. she wants to release all the yeah. prisoners that are in detention. And some of these guys are really bad. Right. That just came yeah, out today. Right. She wants she doesn't yeah. want to build the wall, even though the walls work. Walls and wheels. You know, in your business, everything you do is obsolete. Almost, well, not the tunnels, but everything is obsolete. Even your rocket ships, they're like a month later, they're obsolete. You find a better way to. The only thing that's not obsolete is a wall and a wheel. And the wall, you know, I built hundreds of miles of wall. And it, it, that's why we had such good numbers. I was going to add 200 yeah. miles. We bought it. We could have flipped it, flipped it up in three weeks. And they sold it for five cents on the dollar. That meant, I said, wow, that means that they actually do want to have open borders. She wants to have open borders, and now she's going like she's tough on the on the border. It's such a lie. Yeah, this is simply not yeah. true. This is simply no, not true. No, and everybody knows yeah, it's, it's not true. true. It's, a, it's a disgrace that she yeah. can say it. No, I mean, obviously what's happening sort of overnight is they're, they're rewriting history and um, – and making uh, Kamala sound like a moderate when, in fact, she is far left, like far, far left. Worse than Bernie um, Sanders. She is considered yeah. more liberal by far than Bernie Sanders. She's a radical left lunatic. And if she's going to be our president, very quickly, you're not going to have a country anymore. And she'll go back to all yeah. of the things that she believes in. She believes in defunding the police. She believes in no fracking, zero. You, no, now, all of yeah, a sudden, yeah, she's yeah. saying, uh, no, I, I will... I really want to see fracking. The day, the, if they got in, the day she got in, she'll end fracking. And by the way, if people didn't think that, the lunatics that, that really believe in that, uh, they won't vote for her. You know, um, like, like the Palestinians yeah. and Israel. She is so anti-Israel, and she's bad for both. Biden actually did something that was impossible. Both sides hate him. You know, both sides. That was a hard yeah. thing to do, unification. Yeah, no, no. I mean, I mean, the, you know, Netanyahu came to give a, a talk to you know, a, a joint uh, Senate and House uh, sitting, and I was there, and 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 Kamala stood him up. You know, what does that say? I um, think it's highly disrespectful. Uh, and I say, if you're a Jewish person, or if you believe in Israel, if you're a a person that you know is a very pro-Israel, if you vote for her. It's worse than Biden, and Biden was bad. But if you vote for her, you ought to have your head examined. And you see tonight, I mean, as we're doing this, I'm seeing reports coming that they expect an attack tonight or tomorrow from hundreds and maybe thousands of rockets. You know, their Iron Dome, as they call it, as we all call it, but their shield that they built, uh, that can be uh, swamped. We'll use the term that's yeah. appropriate, swamped. But they yeah. swamp it. By shooting enough missiles, you know this better than anybody, by shooting enough missiles, sure. they can't defend themselves. You know, they just obliterate the whole place. Yeah. And that's what some people think they're looking to do. And we have no leadership. There's no respect for the United States of America with these people. And I'm telling you, yeah. she'll be worse than him because she's a believer yeah, no, in being radical right. left, right. and he wasn't. I, I, I think you're right. I mean, it, you really, it's, it's important for the, for the public that may be listening to this to say, to look at uh, Kamala's track record, you know, uh, before the last, like, month and say, uh, is that a track record you agree with? Um, and I think if you're an independent uh, moderate, you definitely would not agree with it um, because it is, a, her, her behavior has been far left. And we're seeing just an overnight propaganda attempt to rewrite history and make it sound like Kamala's moderate when she, in fact, is, is not moderate. Um, well, her uh, so her running that... mate uh, approved, signed into legislation, tampons in boys' bathrooms, okay? Now, yeah, that's all yeah, I have to hear. <laughs> tampons in boys' <laughs> bathrooms. And that means she believes yeah. in that, too. I mean, yeah, she, not, she picked okay. this guy because he was the closest to her. A lot of people thought she'd pick sort of the opposite, but she picked an anti-Israel, radical left person. But she is far... Worse, they say, than Bernie Sanders. If we have her as a president, if we have a Democrat at this moment as a president, I don't think our country can survive. I, I think it's, I think it's a, a massive, I think, I think we're in massive trouble. 
frankly, with the Kamala administration, and that's my honest opinion. And I think really it's essential that you win for the good of the country for this election. And, I mean, that's understating my opinion. Now, you know, you may have seen this, but I got a letter from the EU commission, like, saying, you know, to not have disinformation during this discussion that we're having. And, you know, there's a lot of attempts to do censorship and to force censorship, even on Americans, from other countries. And, you know, what do you think about that? Well, I know the European Union very well. They take great advantage of the United States in trade, as you know. We, through a different forum, NATO, we protect them. And yet, if you build a car in the United States, you can't sell it in Europe. You just can't sell it. It's impossible. The same thing with our farmers. Our farmers find it very difficult to do business. You know, we have a deficit with them of $250 billion, which people don't know. It sounds so nice, the European Union, but let me tell you, they're not as tough as China, but they're bad. And I let them know it. And that's probably why they notified you. No, they don't treat our country well. We defend them, you know, with Ukraine. So we're in for $250 billion, and they're in for about $71 billion. And they have the same size. If you add up the European nations that, you know, in terms of an economy, it's about the same size, wouldn't you say, as us. And they're in much greater risk. They're right there. We have an ocean separating us from, in this case, the enemy would be Russia. It used to be for the Soviet Union, but let's assume they're close enough. And what happens is they're in for $70-something million, I think even less than that, billion. And we're in for about $250 billion, and it could be a lot higher than that. And I say, why aren't you going to equalize? Why aren't they paying what we're paying? And they're in much more, you know, it's much more important for them because of the fact that, you know, they're right near there. I mean, they're all sort of in that location. We're not. But they should, they should, and I did it with NATO. We were, there were only seven countries that were paid up in NATO out of 28 at the time. And the United States was subsidizing, the United States was subsidizing NATO, tremendously subsidizing NATO. And I said, I went in and I said, you've got to pay up. If you don't pay up, we're not going to defend you any longer. I took a lot of heat. But you know what happened? Billions and billions of dollars came flowing in. Yeah. I think a lot of the public isn't aware of the fact that the United States pays a disproportionate share of the NATO expenses. And then we get taken advantage of on trade. So think about it. Yeah, well, I mean, the point of NATO is defending Europe. And it's, you know, it's like, then, okay, well, why is the United States paying disproportionately more to defend Europe than Europe? That doesn't make sense. That's unfair. And that is an appropriate thing to address. Well, you know, when you talk about cost cutting and savings and everything else, I mean, honestly, look, there's nobody that feels worse about the Ukraine situation than I do because I know it would have never happened. I know Zelensky. He was very honorable to me because when they went with the Russia hoax and they said I had a phone call with him, he said it was a perfect phone call. It was a great phone call. He could have grandstanded and, you know, said, oh, he was very threatening. He said, no, it was a very nice phone call. I called him up to congratulate him on his win, and you end up getting impeached because these people are lunatics. You know, I was talking about the difference from the people within and the enemies on the outside. In many cases, the people from within are more dangerous for our country than the Russians and the Chinas. If you have a smart president, you're not going to have a problem with them. You're going to make – you're going to do things. Yeah. Now, they've taken advantage of us incredibly, but you're going to do things with the right person. Yeah, well, I think it's obvious that you're a believer and an advocate of free speech because during your first term as president, you were attacked relentlessly every day, often very unfairly with false attacks. And you didn't try to shut down the media. You didn't try to inhibit their freedom of speech. And I think that says a lot. Well, the good thing is that you and I have – and some people, very few – we can get the word out, although sometimes it's hard because they don't want to print it. You know, like we're having a great conversation right now, 
Kamala wouldn't have this conversation. She can't because she's not smart. No. <laughs> you know, she's not a smart person, by the way. She can't have this conversation. And Biden, we don't even have to talk about it. I mean, he couldn't have this conversation. He, he would have given up on the first half of a question. He would have walked out. He would have said, where am I? Where am I going? So anyway, but yeah. uh, no, he wouldn't have this. That's true. Not a lot of people would have this conversation, but, you know, we cover a lot of territory. But the beauty is that you, you know, we can have a conversation and I, yes, I'm able to get it out without, because I get <laughs> this is a, fairly This is a really big point. You can actually have a conversation yeah. with you. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? <laughs> and you can't have a conversation with Biden or Kamala. It's like not, uh, it's not possible. Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> So it, 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 this is like talking to an NPC, no. so it's just impossible. Well, but think um, of it. We need a man or a person who's unbelievably sharp in order to stop all the nuclear danger and all the dangers that I'm talking about. And I got along with all these. You know, I got along with Kim Jong-un. We had dinner. We had everything. And he, he really liked me, and I got along with him really well. By the way, he's he's the absolute boss over there. You know, a lot of people said, oh, do you think he will? Yeah, let, that's for let sure. Let me tell you. I saw things that you don't want to know about. He is the boss. But we had a good relationship, and and he doesn't like uh, Biden. He considers him a, a stupid man, he said. He's a stupid man. Well, at least he speaks his mind. But, you know, in this country, you're not sort of allowed to say it, but I guess you are. You should be allowed to say it. Yeah. It's true. But we need really – we need smart people, and we need people that have an ability to lead. And she doesn't have that ability. Can you imagine – now, you know Chairman yeah. – she very well. Can you imagine her and him negotiating or no, even silly. standing it together? It, it is the whole concept yeah. is ridiculous. She is terrible. She's terrible. But she's getting a free ride. Okay. I saw a picture of her yeah, yeah. on Time magazine today. She looks like the most beautiful actress ever to live. I, it was a drawing. And uh, actually, yeah. she looked very much like our great first lady, Melania. She looks. She didn't look. Yeah. She didn't look like Camilla. That's right. But of course, she's a beautiful woman. So we'll leave it at that, right? Yeah. Well, you know, maybe it's like I think part of what you know, people in America want to, you know, people in America want to want to feel excited and inspired about the future. They want to feel like the sure. future is going to be better than the past, and that this that America is going to do things that are greater than uh, we've done in the past, reach right. new heights that make you proud to be an American, and uh, and, and excited about the future. Um, they want and, the American uh, yeah, dream just, back. The, you know, they want the American dream back more important than anything else. It's it's like you don't have that today because the people, they've been just sucked. They see incompetent people running our, you know, the, the Biden thing is very interesting. People just found him to be incompetent. And when I debated him, I was like, is this for real? It was. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's, it was just absurd. Um, but you know, I think there there are like you know some some you know grand projects that that, that we we could do. I mean, I think like you know we we could we could build a base on the moon. We could send American astronauts to Mars. We we, right. we could uh, build, build build high speed connections yeah. that are you know more advanced than anything else in the world between our cities, so people have fast transport. Um, you know, we, it's possible to solve traffic with tunnels. Right. Um, we, we, we were, you know we already made far, great progress in Vegas doing that. And, um, you know, and, and, and just do things that are exciting and inspiring and make the future feel like it's better than the past. Well, I saw what I, you I, did in I, Vegas, I, and I'll tell you, it was amazing. I, I got to see, I took a big glimpse at it, and it's incredible. What you, you know, it's incredible. And you could do that all over. You could do that all over. It's, uh, it's deep. Yeah. You don't even need much structure, you know, assuming you're in the right area. No, it's, it's, it's straightforward. It's amazing. Um, so, and, and, like, I think we could do some, some things that, like, like China's got incredible, uh, high speed rail between its cities, but I think it's actually possible, um, with, with, with tunnels, if, 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 with deregulation, with, with an ability to actually, where it's, like, legal to, to, to actually do the tunnels, then you could have high speed, uh, t uh, tunnels that are actually better, uh, than, than, than anything else in the world for high speed transport between cities. And that would be something that, you know, Americans can say, wow, okay, we've, we've got something that's cooler than anyone else in yeah. the world. That's, that's the kind of thing that makes you proud to be an American. And much safer than surface, uh, trains where there is a danger there, you know, with people, with crazy people. Yeah. It's much safer, much better. Uh, and you know, it's sad because I've seen some of the greatest trains. I, I find it fascinating. And I've seen the systems and how they work and the bullet trains, they call them, I guess. And they, yeah. they go, Unbelievably fast, unbelievably comfortable, 
with no problems. And we don't have anything like that in this country, not even close. And it yeah. doesn't make sense that we don't. Doesn't make sense. Yeah, and I, I think also like the, there's, you know, I just I, I'm kind of hopping on the excess regulation, but I think something that, um, that I think people can generally understand is that what happens with laws and regulations is that they just there's more and more of them every year, and unless there's a process to clean them up, eventually everything becomes right. illegal, and and that actually sl- sl- it slows down the development of new technologies. I mean, if you take the sort of like I think we, we, there's, there's, there's room for some reform at the at the FDA uh, for yeah. uh, improving the speed with which we uh, you know, approve uh, drugs that that could help uh, save lives and improve people's yeah. lives. Um, and I worked uh, very and, hard on that. You know, you know we got that down yeah. to, to the lowest number ever, and we got uh, therapeutics approved in the FDA that people can't even believe the speed. But I. I took them on. I, I don't think they like me too much, but I got things approved in the FDA at, at, at numbers that they wouldn't believe. And, you know, it's a very bureaucratic group. Actually, it's a fine group of people in many cases. I got to know a lot of them, but I was pushing them really hard for Regeneron, for so many different things that, that were really pretty amazing. But, but the FDA takes too long. They would, it's 12 years to get a product approved. I got it down to four. And I yeah. got some things done very quickly, but it's uh, it's really something that is going to have to be worked on because it takes too long. It just takes too long. Yeah, it, it just takes too long, and, and it's you end up in the same with with the approval. But it just it's just you know it takes years instead of something that that I think could potentially take yeah. months uh, that improves, improves people's lives. Yeah. I think you know, and and but but it, it, I I just, I just wanted to sort of hop on this point that like there has to be an active process. Uh, for re- reducing rules and regulations because otherwise they, they just keep building up every year yep. and you get like hardening of the arteries and eventually everything's illegal uh, or takes forever um, and and then and then we we, we just um, we, we just ossify as a society we just uh, we can't make any progress yeah. and and that's a, it's a really big well deal. you know Elon just so, getting back to the FDA for one second I got something done called right to try this is where you can go in and if you're terminally ill, you can use a space age, uh, you know, medicine or whatever it may be. We have the best doctors, the best labs in the world. We really do. And but people would go to other countries because you couldn't use this the product, even if they thought it worked, because it's going through the FDA. I got it approved yeah. where you can. Yeah. You, you basically you look. Nobody wanted the doctors didn't want it because of the liability. The country didn't want it. Our country because they didn't want to get to. These are people terminally ill. The insurance companies didn't want it, and the pharmaceutical companies, nobody wanted it. I got everybody into a room, and we came up with an agreement that you won't get sued. And also, they didn't want it on their record. If somebody's terminally ill and they die after taking a drug, they didn't want that on their record. So we set a second, a, a separate list if somebody was, so it wouldn't count as a negative. Yeah. Okay? And as you know, we got it yeah. done. We have saved, right to try, they've been trying to get this done for, 58 yeah. years, and it sounds simple, but it wasn't because, of, you know, I mean, you know, the insurance companies, nobody wanted it, but we got it done. Sure. Somebody signs, you sign a document that you're not going to sue the insurance companies, the country, you're not going to sue anybody, and we got it done, and we're saving tens of thousands of lives right to try. Hopefully, you never need it, but if you yeah. do, you don't have to travel to Asia. You know, people, right. if they had money, they go to Asia, yeah, they sure. go to Europe. If they don't have money, they go home and die. That's what happened. They'd go home and die. Yeah. Uh, well, well, I mean, and, and actually, to, to, to give Europe some some props here, it's like if a drug is approved it, approved in the in the, in Europe, which has a crazy amount of regulations, it should obviously be approved in the U.S. Yeah. I mean, they get more regulations than we do. So, what? Why would a drug be approved in Europe and not in the U.S.? That that's crazy. Well, we did it. We um, did something that really they've been trying to do it for 50 years, and they just couldn't get it done. And I got it done. And it's uh, it's really something. But you're right. Some people go to Europe because a drug isn't approved here, but it's approved in Europe. And it's a drug that, generally speaking, would yeah. work. It's pretty crazy. Absolutely. But you're right. And I, I, th- I think so, as long as people are properly informed of, of the pros and cons and, like, the, these are the risks, these are, you know, these are the risks, and, like, you make your own decision, yeah. um, that, that makes sense. Well, I think just, you so, know, in sort of closing up, I, and by the way, I'm looking at the numbers. You've got a lot of people listening I hope you don't get yeah. nervous because you got a lot of people listening to you right now, like 60 million or something. What is that number? It's crazy. It's amazing how you can see that right away. How many? What is the number? Wow. 
What is it? Well, wow. I, I think in terms well, that's of people... A, that's, that, a big, that's bigger than you said. You, you said 25, and you're more than, much more than double that number, 25 million. I think you're going to be 60 or 70. And I guess over a period of time, hey, that's, I congratulate you. Do I get paid for this or not? It's, <laughs> <laughs> well, it, I, I think actually in terms of the number of people that will, will hear this conversation um, over the next uh, you know, few days, two right. weeks, uh, it, it's going to be a hundred. That's what they say. Yeah, that's good. Well, look, it's an yeah. honor. I, but I, I just ask this, are you better off now or were you better off when I was president? Nobody's better off now. People, you know, we put out polls on that and nobody's better off now. Inflation has killed it. And, you know, they also feel very unsafe. You look at what's going on with a lot of different things. You look at the riots we had at yeah. the colleges over, I mean, it's ridiculous, but right. all of the riots, they just feel unsafe. And now they really feel unsafe because you have a new form of crime. It's called migrant crime. I call it Biden well, migrant yeah. crime. Maybe I'll call well, it Kamala I, I, migrant crime. But, you, you know, I mean, with all these things, I always try to like try to get to the ground truth by just asking people. And, you know, my, my mom lives in New York and I, I was like, you know, mom, you know, do you know, have you, any of your friends, you know, been, Attacked or assaulted, and she said, "Yeah, three of her friends in, in three separate Crazy. incidents were assaulted just 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 in recent months, just walking around the streets in New York." And I, and I and, and I said, "Well, did, what what happened to the people that assaulted them? Oh, nothing. They they, they got away. Like, and and they they, they just know they always get away. No, nothing's going. And they don't even they don't even bother reporting it because there's not they know that there's not they're not going to you know people are not going to get prosecuted. They just they just let." You know, violent criminals out in New York. The with, only one that gets violence. prosecuted is Donald Trump. They don't get, they prosecute Trump. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's just obviously messed up. That's terrible. If, if violent criminals are being, are, are being getting off scot free. Yeah. Um, and, and, and meanwhile, that the, the, you know, New York spending massive resources prosecuting you. And it's like, what's this, you know, and, and I think the, the, the sort of sensible public said, looks at this and says, what the heck's going on here? This is obviously abuse of the legal system. Um, you, you know, the, the legal system is supposed to be protecting the public right. from um, violent criminals, and it, it should be obviously allowing the public to make their own decision about who should be president as opposed to, you know, some, uh, you know, legal case. Once they start this precedent, because this can go on with the next one, I mean, this is a very bad precedent, what they're doing in terms of, you know, going after their political opponent, and that's all it is. It's going after their political opponent. And, yes. and then you get a judge who's, you know, a, a strong Democrat, and I'm being nice when I say that in many cases, crooked as hell. But you get a judge and you go into an area where a Republican gets three or four percent of the vote. And, you know, you'll have a jury pool yeah. with uh, people that hate Republicans or hate. It could sure. also be the other way. Though, of course. Because it could start the other way in areas where they hate exactly. Democrats. And you get into yep. a Pandora's box. It's a very dangerous thing for uh, this country and a very dangerous thing even for the state. New York City is losing, yes, New York City and state lose a lot of business over what they did to me because these people say, we don't want that to happen to us. That's no justice system. You have an unfair system yes. of justice and it's costing New York State a tremendous amount of money. People are leaving and companies are leaving and they won't come back. So, you know, all of that stuff is important, but the economy now is the big thing and we can turn that economy up so fast and people are going to be back again. We're going to get rid of yeah, inflation. Yeah, I, I think there's a lot, a lot of opportunity. Right, absolutely. absolutely. So, and I just want I, I to, I want to congratulate uh, you. You've done an amazing job. You are, you have definitely got a fertile mind. You know, we can talk, you and I can talk about rockets. Well, it's kind of you to say thank well, you. Well, tunnels, we can talk about <laughs> tunnels and rockets and, and, uh, electric cars, so many things. And now you're, you're into the AI and that's going to be another beauty, I'll say. So it's uh, yeah. it's an amazing it's an amazing thing you've done, Elon. It's an amazing thing, and I well, congratulate well, you. I mean, thank you. And well, I mean, I just uh, say here, you know, here's to an exciting, inspiring future that people can look forward to and be optimistic and excited about what happens next. And that's uh, the kind of future that I think uh, you will bring as president, and that's why I endorse you. Well, I appreciate that. That endorsement meant a lot to me. Not all endorsements mean that much, to be honest. Your endorsement meant a lot. And, you know, we have a, a phrase, make America great again. It's pretty simple, but it really says that we want to make America great again. And we can do it. We can do it now, 
But if we were going to suffer another four years like we suffered for the last four years, I'm not sure the country can ever come back. That's how bad it is. It's so bad. We have to we have to do a lot. I think that's a very real risk. It's a big risk. It's a very real risk. And, and it's, you know, I'd just like to, to note to people listening, like, I, I've not been very political before, and, and if just, if you look at my track, my record, it's, I've actually been, I'm, I'm, I'm not like, since I try to paint me as like a far right guy, which is absurd, because I'm like making electric vehicles and, you know, solar and, and batteries helping them with the environment, and, uh, and, and I actually, I, I, uh, you know, I, I supported Obama, I stood in line for six hours to shake Obama's hand when, when he was running for president, and, you know, so it's not like I'm like some sort of dyed in the wool long term Republican. I'm actually I call myself uh you know, historically a moderate Demo- democrat and, and but now I feel like we're really at, at a critical juncture for the country. Um and uh you know, I I think a lot of people thought, you know, that Biden administration would be a moderate administration, but it's not. And and obviously the, the, we're just gonna see a an an uh an even further left uh, administration with, with Kamala. That's, that's my honest opinion. I mean, her dad is literally, uh, it, 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 I mean, she was brought up as a, as an actual, it, her dad is, an, is, a, is a Marxist economist. That's, you can Google it. I mean, it's not a, we're not making this up, you know. Um, that's how she was brought up. So, uh, and, and we, we just, we, we want to have a future that is prosperous. And, and I, I think we're just at this critical juncture. And, um, and it, I think this is a case of, the, the America uh, is is kind of at a fork in the road, and sure. um, and I think it, it will take it, it will take if the, the path to, like you are the path to prosperity, and I think Kamala is the opposite. Then that's my I mean that's my honest opinion. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna get attacked like crazy, and you know I've also experienced quite a bit of lawfare myself. Um, and uh, but I'm just trying to tell people my honest opinion, and and I I haven't been active in really active in politics before. Um, and I'm just trying to point out that my track record historically has been moderate, if not moderate, slightly left. And, and uh, so this is to people out there who are in the moderate camp to say, I think you should support um, Donald Trump for president. Um, and and I, I think it's actually a very important junction in the road, and, and we're in deep trouble if it, if, if, if it goes the other way. Well, I want to thank you. And, you know, I actually always did think of you as somewhat left. I must say that. So... It's, uh, it's <laughs> yeah. even more of an well, honor to yeah. have your endorsement. I know how strong you feel about it. But, you know, when you think of her, uh, San Francisco, 15 years ago, I had a great friend, Bob Tish. He said it's the greatest city in America. And now it's, you, it's, not, it's almost not livable there. And California, likewise. And she was involved in the destruction of San Francisco and the destruction of California. And she will be involved in the destruction of our country if people are so unwise as to elect her. And I hope that doesn't happen. And I hope the elections are going to be run honestly. And we're going to turn this country around. We're going to we're going to do things that and we can do it fairly quickly. And we have to get rid of the criminals that have been, you know, given to us by other countries as they laugh. They laugh at us. They think we're stupid to accept these people. These are radical, stone cold killers in many cases, cases and terrorists. And they're in our country by the hundreds of thousands. Yeah. And we have to take yeah. them out. Yeah, I mean, if, if I could summarize it, perhaps, uh, you know, I think th- th- these are issues that I think most people in America uh, would, would agree with, which is that we want safe and clean cities. We want secure borders. Uh, we want sensible government spending. We want to res- uh, restore res- both the perception and the reality of respect in the, in the, in the judicial system, just, you know, stop the lawfare. Um, and, uh, and I think... We, that, that's I, like, and how are the how are those even right wing positions? I think those are just that's, that's just common sense, and and that's uh, I mean, would you agree with that? Hundred percent. I I don't understand. You know, the whole they call it progressive. They don't like the word liberal anymore, but call it liberal or progressive. I don't understand how somebody could say that it's okay for them to empty prisons into our country. And again, I told you their crime yes, rates all over the world are going way down. Which makes sense. In fact, the next time what we'll do is if something happens with this election, which would be a horror show, we'll meet the next time in Venezuela because it'll be a far safer place to meet than our country. Okay, so we'll go. You and I will go and we'll have a meeting and dinner in Venezuela because that's what's happening. Their crime rates coming down and our crime rates going through the roof. And it's so simple. And you haven't seen anything yet. 
because these people have come into our country and they're just getting acclimated. And they don't know about being politically correct law enforcement or lack of law enforcement. And our police, I, I have to just end with this, we have great police, we have great law enforcement, but they're not allowed to do their job. They have to be able to do their job yeah. without being destroyed. Well, absolutely. And it's, it's obviously demoralizing if you're a police officer risking your life uh, to, you know, to, you know, to arrest uh, violent criminals who could kill you and do kill you sometimes. Um, and then you, you arrest the violent criminal and then the, the DA, you know, doesn't prosecute and, and they've just let the guy out. Yeah. Well, then like, why, why should a police officer risk their life, uh, to arrest a violent felon? Well, even worse, if, if Elon, if nothing's going to happen. Even worse, they prosecute the police officer. <laughs> They, they go after it and they prosecute the police officer and they take away his pension. They take away his yeah. job. He loses his family. He loses his house. Well, I, I, th I thought it was very telling, like incredibly telling that, you know, when that there was that case where, uh, you know, a, a, sort of a gang of thugs beat up uh, police officers. I think it was in Times yep. Square in New York. And 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 then nothing happened to those guys. They were they were let out zero bail. And uh, I think Washington would give them free tickets to California. Well, what is the, I mean, that, that is, that is a, that is a gross indignity against the United States. And, and that's how, I mean, this is insane. Like, have we lost all pride? What, what, that, how can such a thing be allowed to occur? I've never seen anything, you know, we see where they get shot. It's a very dangerous profession, but it's something they're very proud of and they want to be able to do their job. But I've seen them get shot. I've seen a lot of that. But I've never seen where these guys are standing in the middle of a big street, everybody watching them, and they're literally boxing, like punching, stand-up fighting, a police officer. There were two of them. And yeah. you had about six yeah, of yeah. these guys, and they're punching the hell out of them. And in their own country, they would be dead if they did that. They'd be shot. <laughs> yeah. They would be shot instantly. And, you know, they come from these countries, and it's taking them a while to realize that we don't do that in this country. But in their own country, yeah. if they stood on a street and had a fight with a police officer, they would be shot. There's no political correctness. And it's such a sad, yeah, it's just, it's such a sad thing to see. And that's the reason you we, have yeah, time, we, by the way, yeah. because we don't do anything about yeah. it. Yeah, we, we just cannot have a situation where our police officers are beat, beaten up on camera uh, by, you know, a, a, a gang of illegal immigrants. And then nothing happens to, to, to the, the guys that beat, beat up the cops. I mean, and they're let out. This is... Well, we're going to change it, um, and we're going to get them out of the country. You know, when I first uh, got involved, they said you couldn't get them back to these countries. You couldn't take them back. In the case of uh, Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, some others, you couldn't get them back. And I said, really? Oh, you can't get them back. All right. Hello, everyone. Um, so uh, my apologies for the late start. Uh, we unfortunately had a massive uh, distributed denial of service attack against uh, our servers and uh, <laughs> saturated all of our, all of our uh, data lines, like basically hundreds of gigabits of, of data were saturated. Um, we've uh, we think we've overcome most of that. And uh, so it's uh, now time to proceed. But um, as, as this, uh, this massive attack illustrates, uh, there's a lot of opposition to people just hearing, um, what, uh, President Trump has to say. And, um, so, but I, I'm honored to have this conversation. I want to emphasize it's a, it's a conversation. Um, and it's really intended to just get, get a feel for what Donald Trump is just like in a conversation. Um, it's, it's hard to catch a vibe about someone if you, just don't hear them talk in a normal way. And when, you know, when there's, when there's an adversarial interview, it's like n no one's themselves in an adversarial interview. Um, so for, and, and this is really aimed at, uh, kind of open-minded, independent voters who, um, they're just trying to make up their mind. Uh, and, uh, so you can understand, like, what, what is, uh, you know, what is it just like to have a conversation? So, um, uh, honored to, to, to uh, Donald, great, great to, uh, 
to speak. Um, we, we had a, a great conversation yesterday. As, as you mentioned yesterday, if, if we could just record that conversation and post it, it would have been excellent. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I, I hope we can have something like that today. Well, I think we will. I'm pretty sure we will. And congratulations, because I see you broke every record in the book with uh, so many millions of people. And it's an honor. We view that as an honor. And then uh, you do want silencing of certain voices. Usually those are voices that have something to say that are constructive, oftentimes (laughs) constructive. And uh, so we have to consider it an honor. But congratulations on breaking every record in the book tonight. That's great. Well, thank you. Um, well, I mean, maybe uh, we could start off with, um, I mean, the assassination attempt, uh, which uh, w- w- was an incredible thing. And I have to say that, uh, you know, your actions after that, mass, that, that assassination attempt were inspiring. Um, you know, you, instead of shying away from things, instead of ducking down, um, you were popping your fist in the air and saying, fight, fight, fight. And I think that's, I mean... You know, the, the, the president of the United States represents America, and I think that is that is America. That is, that is strength under fire, and um, so that's uh, you know a, a big a, you know a part of the reason why I was uh, excited to endorse you as uh, the, the, the president of the United States for ha- having a term here is uh, that was that was just incredibly inspiring. But, but I mean, what was it like for you? Not pleasant. I not to be pleasant. I said there was blood. I, had more shot, blood. I didn't know I, had, I didn't know I had that much blood. The doctors <laughs> later told me that the ear is a place that is uh, a very bloody place if you're going to get hit. But uh, in this case, it was probably the best alternative you could even think about because it went at the right angle. And, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was a hard hit. It was very... Uh, I guess you would say surreal, but it wasn't surreal. You know, I was telling somebody you have instances like this or like a lot less than this where you feel it's a surreal situation. And I never felt that way. I I knew immediately that it was a bullet. I knew immediately that it was at the ear. Yeah. And uh, because it, you know, it hit very hard, but hit the ear. And I also heard people shout bullets, bullets, uh, you know, get down, get down, because I, you know, I moved down pretty nicely, pretty quickly, and we had bullets flying right over my head after I went down, so I'm glad I went down. The the bigger miracle was that I was looking in the exact direction of the shooter, and so it hit, it hit me at an angle that was uh, far less destructive than any other angle, so that was the miracle. That was, yeah. for those people that don't thing? believe in God, I think yeah, <laughs> we got to all start thinking about that. You have to... Uh, you know, I'm I'm a believer. Now I'm more of a believer, I think. And a lot of people have said that to me. A lot of great people have said that to me, actually. But it was uh, it was amazing that I happened to be turned just at that perfect yeah. angle. And uh, all because I put down a, a chart on immigration that showed that the numbers were so great. I, I love that chart even more I mean, more maybe it's a sign. <laughs> maybe yeah. that's a sign. Man. <laughs> it's an immigration sign. <laughs> you, you highlighted a, a serious issue. <laughs> and yeah. At that moment, <laughs> yes, the, the, the bullet, Mister, you know, hit your ear, but, 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 you know, Mister, 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 your head. I mean, you're, well, the the amazing head. thing is that uh, the sign I said, bring down that sign on immigration, and it was literally about an eighth of a second where it would be good, and and after that, it was going to yeah. be a disaster, no matter which which way you were facing. But it just had that that perfect angle, which was exactly. Yeah at this shooter, very sad situation, such a sad situation. As you know, we lost somebody that was great, Corey, yeah. who, a firefighter, a, a, a great gentleman, a great, a great trumper. He was a, a, just a fantastic family and a fantastic man. And a friend of mine came up, Elon, and said, I'd like to give uh, the family some kind of uh, help. And I said, oh, that's great. He said, do you mind? I said, I don't mind at all. And he wrote out a check for a million dollars, gave gave it to the wife. And, you know, uh, she said, this is really nice, but I'd rather have my husband back, which is a nice thing for sure. somebody to say, to be honest. She's, she's great. The family is great. And we raised a lot of yeah. money for them and for uh, two other gentlemen who are unbelievable people also. They were hit really badly. They thought they were not going to make it, and they did. The doctors in the Butler area, I tell you, they were incredible. They saved the two, 
and uh, they were really hit tough, both of them, equally. Yeah. Uh, and we thought, yeah. we, I, my first question was because I heard bullets flying over me. I said, how many people were killed? Because we had a massive crowd there, a tremendous, yeah. thousands and thousands of people. And, and there was no land. I mean, it was just, it was all people. So I said, how many people have been killed? Because I knew there were other shots being fired. And, sure. and they said, uh, we don't know yet, but some people have been badly hurt. And uh, I have to give the uh, Secret Service a sniper, they call him, or sharpshooter, but sniper, yeah. because he didn't know there was a problem. Uh, he's been, he's an extraordinary shot, obviously, and he didn't know there was a problem. And he yeah. was able to pick it all out within five seconds. And he used one bullet from very far away, I guess probably about 400 yards. The shooter was 130, but he was on the, uh, yeah. uh, he was on the opposite side of the field and the podium. And he saw the, the smoke and the flame from the gun immediately recognized it and immediately took a shot. And it was one perfect shot from very far away. And, and if he, if he didn't yeah. do that, Elon, he would have, I mean, if he would have, a lot of people, a lot more people have been, could have been sure. badly hurt and killed. So yeah, I, I absolutely. have to take my hat off to him because that's also a surreal, you know, he's been with them for 23 years. And there's, yeah. he's never had anything like this. And all of a sudden he has to act. And it's a very tough thing to sure. act and to be shooting somebody. But he saw the, uh, he saw the gun, saw the smoke, saw the flame from the gun very far away. I obviously has very good eyes. He's got very good vision, which I assume you yeah. have to have in that particular work. But he, uh, he <laughs> took aim very quickly and it was, they say it was approximately five seconds from long range, yeah. one bullet. If that didn't happen, because yeah. the shooter had a lot of bullets, he had a lot of a lot of cartridges sure. up there with him. So, well, have been very I mean, I mean that that that's clearly uh, uh, you know um, you know he was he was very confident in taking that shot uh, to stop the the assassin the attempted assassination. Um, uh, but but I mean that does seem to be I, I mean some pretty significant failings um, elsewhere in the system. Like there's just no way that like how on earth does a shooter get on a roof 130 yards away. Um, that seems crazy. Um, I think most people like are what people are wondering how that on earth could such a thing happen. Well, you know, I view it as two ways. Uh, there should have been nobody in the roof. Uh, there were people yeah. because there were so many tens of thousands of people there. There were people that were seeing him, and there was one woman with a red shirt and uh, right. Trump all over it, and, she, and she's screaming. And that guy's got a gun. You know, you saw it probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a yeah, guy up there with a gun. I mean, it's like, I'm just, I'm just, I guess, I mean, from, from my part, and I think probably many members of the public are wondering how the heck are, you know, basically p people wandering by it, pointing out there's a guy on the roof with a gun. Yeah. Um, and they're seeing it, but uh, somehow that's, it's not being addressed. Um that, that does seem yeah, crazy. Well, they, they're going to learn from this. The uh, communication between the local police, who sort of had an idea, and then ultimately a man lifted himself up to the roof, could barely do it because, you know, he was pulling himself up. And yeah. he saw the man with the gun. The man with the gun pointed the gun at him. He thought he was probably going to get shot. But, you know, he was like pulling himself up. And because of that, he couldn't get to his gun. And he fell down, actually very badly hurt his uh, leg, his ankle, I hear very badly, but, okay. but he fell down. And he did, you know, from what I understand, he did say there's a guy up there with a gun. And the, the shooting started very quickly after that. I think, it, I think it forced the shooter to go maybe quicker. You know, he's supposed to be a very good shot. Yeah. My sons, uh, Don and Eric, they, they came believe what happened, but they said from 130 yards, a bad shot would hit that target almost every time. They said it's like in golf, yeah. thinking a two-foot putt. Yeah, it's, it's not a hot, it's not a no, tough shot. It's not a, it's um, not a long shot. The uh, Secret Service person had the long shot. He had a, you know, triple the yeah. distance, actually. So, uh, you know, it's, it was a, a terrible thing. It, look, uh, it, it's hard. I have to say this about the Secret Service. When I went down, and, you know, I went down based on, I think they're screaming. 
but other people also, because people saw this happen. You know, you had so many people. One of the miracles was that nobody ran. I mean, if, if a gun goes off, the crowd yeah. control people showed, showed us this. When guns go off, and it does happen in stadiums at a soccer match or some kind of a match, everybody flees. They call it a stampede, like cattle. But everybody, and a lot yeah. of people get killed with those stampedes. Uh, we had sure. more people than you'd have at, you know, some of these matches or, or these games. And uh, nobody left. You know, you had a, a small group behind us in the grandstand, and that was full. And you look at it as it was taking place, and normally they'd be running. They didn't leave. They saw that I was hurt. They saw a lot of blood, and they saw that I went down. And it's almost like they wanted to be with me. Well, out front, you had thousands, tens of thousands of people. You, as far as the eye could see, you had people in Butler, as far as the eye could see. And and uh, yeah. and a lot of press, too. It was, you know, many cameras on watching this. It's what made, makes it so different, because normally things happen that aren't good, but you never have a picture of it. Here we have all these cameras shooting it. So, yeah. uh, you know, it's sort of amazing. But one of the interesting things was that you didn't have anybody flee. You didn't have anybody stampede. Sure. Nobody. 